No, man, I'm sorry. I, I just don't get it. I don't understand. This is Slammiversary. This was the plan. You the director of wrestling operations. You put Bobby and me in the cage with EY, and he loses the title. No fuss, no muss. Nobody get hurt. You mean you don't get hurt? Same thing. No, it's not the same thing. Listen, you said it right. I am the director of wrestling operations. And maybe you're not aware, Dixie went to the board of directors crying on everything that I've done since I've been here. So my every move they second guess. They examine everything I do under a microscope. I'm not even supposed to be here. The doctor said I'm supposed to be off my leg. But I'm here to make sure that this is done the right way to get them off my back. So it's not up for discussion. All right, man, whatever. We're gonna do it your way, all right? But you still got my back out there, no, right? tonight, Kenny has Kenny's back out there, just like Bobby has Bobby's back. What, you gonna come up short? You can't do what, it? Who, me? Come up short with you? You know what? Forget it. I'm gonna win the title tonight. Don't worry about it. I got it. Don't worry about it. Hey, Bobby, do me a favor, man. Put some ice in the kid's drink, man. You got it. It began as a dream and became a reality. Tonight, a very special evening. It's an evening that revolves around history and history on so many fronts. 12 years of history-making moments. This is a lifetime I've been thinking about this day. It's even more perfect than I thought. Converting doubters into believers. From the six-sided ring to the Hall of Fame. I've had some awesome moments here, but this one has to be the best so far. Fans from around the world have joined in the movement. For the very first time, Impact Wrestling emanates from the United Kingdom. And turned an idea into one of the most dominant forces in sports entertainment today. Tonight, we celebrate 12 years of total. What a return to the Samoan submission machine. Non-stop. You can sense the hatred these two men have for each other. Action. He got it! Eric Young has become the new world heavyweight champion. My God, you gotta be kidding me. Tonight, we celebrate TNA. TNA Wrestling presents Slammiversary. From the College Park Center at UT Arlington, near Dallas, Texas, we welcome you to TNA's 12-year anniversary event. Tonight in Carter Country, the Olympic gold medalist, Kurt Angle, announces the newest inductee to TNA's Hall of Fame. Plus, world champion Eric Young defends his title in the steel cage. But who will Eric's two challengers be? Ladies and gentlemen, this is Slammiversary. And there can be no better way to kick off Slammiversary than a title match, X Division Championship at stake in a six-way ladder match. Let the hunt begin! The following contest is a six-way ladder match for the X Division Championship. Introducing first, Davey Richards and Eddie Edwards, the Wolves! The Wolves, two-time TNA World Tag Team Champions has, to me, they have a distinct advantage because they can work together in this six-way match. Yeah, no doubt about that. The Wolves had a chance to have a little chat with them earlier today. They seem really amped up for this contest, I'm telling you. And their opponents introducing first from Tijuana, Mexico, Tigre Uno. Yes, another of the challengers. The high-flying luchador from Mexico, Tigre Uno, as we take a look at our Spanish broadcast team, Willie 
Urbina and Hector Guerrero. Well, it's Tigre Uno, definitely a stud athlete, not huge in stature, but huge in exuberance and excitement from a physical standpoint. He's a spectacle for sure. And of course, when it comes to Tigre Uno, he may have an advantage over the others because of the recent series of matches that he has had with the X Division champion, Sonata. Yeah, well, well good point. I mean, definitely, uh, look, Sonata, uh, you know, Sonata, yeah, we're gonna see in a little, little while here. Sonata's the man, in my opinion. You know, love Sonata, how do you not love the, you know, the X Division champion? But right now, you can just sense the tension here. It's gonna be crazy, it's gonna be wild. It's gonna be a great way to kick off this humongous show we have here at Slammiversary. Sonata victorious in that recent best of three series against Tigre Uno. But tonight in the ladder match, it's the chance for Tigre Uno to get some payback, get some revenge against the reigning X Division champion from Japan. By the way, on the side, we have a great, great audience here this evening, man. It's awesome. Fire it up, huh? He's gonna fire it up. Oh, a little person. <laughs> they freaked me out a little bit. Who is this dude? I wonder if that's Uncle Pat. Mikey. I know who that is. It's Rabble. Oh, there's somebody new every week with this freak show. Speaking of injuries. Speaking of freaks. I see him. The freak. <laughs> the menagerie. Who's the little cat, man? Look at him. That chubby fella, huh? <laughs> and there's the man of the hour. Big, bad, look at him. Hey, look, how could you not be happy when you got the very leggy, beautiful... And they're calling oh, it representing the menagerie. No, hardly. Crazy Steve! Well, I was talking about Rebel. But right now, Crazy Steve on his little tricycle, loaded with balloons. Whoa! Balloons. Where is uh, there a bit of shadow? <laughs> <laughs> trying to be a gentleman here. Father's well, Day, happy first. Father's Day, why not? <laughs> Who knows what we're gonna get from Crazy Steve? You We've seen know. him in, in one match against Kazarian, went to a no contest. You'll remember that Crazy Steve pants the referee in that match. Yes, he did pants the referee, that made wrestling history. <laughs> and let's not repeat that ever again. But I digress. And yeah, well. All oh, right, speaking of Father's Day, happy Father's Day to all our dads out there. And that's directly from Rebel. <laughs> <laughs> oh, crazy Complete Steve. with sound effects. Yes. <laughs> oh, Hush Puppy Jones. <laughs> and their opponent, Former X Division champion. Three month reign after winning the title last July. Whoa, and Manic. Oh, look, you see our French broadcast team there, Mike. Sure do. Hey. Sileon, Marini, Gregory D. Hollywood. MCS, the French broadcast team. International flair here tonight in Slammiversary. MCS, FTW. Everybody's got little acronyms. I love me? It. FTW, that's my gimmick. And their opponent from Tokyo, Japan, your X Division champion, Sonata! He made his TNA debut back on March the 9th at our lockdown pay-per-view when he teamed with his mentor, the great Muda. But then the week before in Tokyo, Japan, at a Wrestle 1 event, Sonata defeated Austin Aries to win the Whoa. X Division championship. And, <laughs> and Manic with the early offensive attack on the champ even before the opening oh. bell. I was just gonna point out that the numbers game, to me, makes this the toughest defense to date. For Sonata with five challengers, I think we should probably stay focused on Davey Richards and Eddie Edwards as the Wolves fly. And the Wolves dropping Manic and Sonata got dropping before that, before they went flying out the ring. Crazy Steve was hanging upside down. Oh, wait a minute. Crazy Steve's got a chant going. Crazy Steve's got a massive following. 
And again, wow. this is a ladder match. What, what the way that you win struggle, is to climb struggle. up the ladder and take down the X Division Championship well, that hangs high above the ring. Before you can do that, you have to try to get the ladder out from under the ring. I don't know why he would even grab that, but he's crazy. Steve, there's a ladder on the outside already all set. At least that's why he's crazy, Steve. You know, he's unpredictable. You never know what he's going to do. We cannot uh, drive oh. home <laughs> the importance of the X Division oh. Championship, Taz, especially with Destination X fast approaching this summer. You know, once you head into July, wait, 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 if Mike, you've got Mike. that title, as we see Tigre Uno with a beautiful twisting corkscrew attack. There's always option C, and we know how important that has been Maybe in recent yeah. years as we take another look at Team Ray Unit. Yeah, that athleticism just amazing. That's what I said earlier about Tigre Uno, Tiger as I call him. I mean, listen, he just brings tons of energy and athleticism. Amazing, amazing spectacle is that young athlete. And right now, Manic might have an opportunity here to get that ladder set up and get up there and try and capture. Well, he that had a little space, what, what? but look how quickly Sonata's going to make up the gap. And the champion, who able to drive well, Manic back first right into the corner. We've discussed it in the recent past on Impact Wrestling. Look, the amount of pressure we've witnessed that this young man, Sonata, is under from his country of Japan, from the great Muda, namely, uh, putting so much pressure on this young man to succeed here in the United States for TNA. And you have to admit, he's done nothing but succeed as he goes springboard and lands with the big chop to the head of Manny. Now this this young athlete is something special. I mean, for, he's got tremendous size, his speed, quickness, and we've seen some excellent contest between these two men that you pointed out earlier. Yeah, right? touched on the familiarity between uh -oh. Sonata uh -oh. and uh -oh. Tigre Uno. Oh, buddy. Going for a double overhook throw there. Onto that ladder, maybe. Missed the round kick, but got him with the back heel hook kick. Great job by Tigre Uno. And Tigre with a chop to the chest of Eddie Edwards. Watch the double spring. Oh, make it a triple, make it a quadruple. And went for the Hurricane Rana, but it was stopped. It was blocked by Edwards, who hands Tigre off to Richards. Oh, first the kick, then the release suplex into the ladder. Wow. Well, German suplexes aren't fun to take. Let's take a look. Just listen, listen. Yeah, and as the crowd here in Dallas said, that was a holy bleep moment. <laughs> I agree. It was exciting for everyone except for Tigre Uno. <laughs> now what? Again, this is every man for themselves. It is, but at the same time, the Wolves, they have the ability to work together, uh, to, nah. to watch each other's backs. I mean, I'm with you. Keep oh. your eyes on Manic. Where'd he come from? I think Manic, he will come from anywhere he wants. Uh-oh, crazy Steve. <laughs> you never know what he's going to do, because he don't know what he's going to do. No clue. Surveys right, the situation. On. All right. <laughs> Is that where? Oh. Oh. It's like an Antonino Rock, Antonino Rock up moment. Remember the, the airplane spin? <laughs> There's no human on his back. Oh! oh. They're dropping like flies. Oh yeah, I trust him climbing that ladder after being that dizzy. Crazy Steve. Oh my God, he's got a chance here. Representing oh. the menagerie with the opportunity to bring gold to the menagerie in Nux. Big Steve chant here, Mike. But Manic able to cut him off before he can make his way up the ladder. Manic now, Steve's got to stop him, crazy Steve. I don't think, I don't think he knows what the, what, uh oh, no, wait, I wait, think wait, he wait. knows. Oh! oh! How about the recovery in the middle of that move by Manic? Using that top rope for balance, crashing down Wait, in the Mike, opposition. Mike, look, here it is. The opportunity's there again. Steve's got it in his sights. Crazy one. Ladder first. Either side will work, Steve. Here we go. Might have a better angle to take it down. Oh, he's got his fingertips he's on get it. He's, look how close Crazy Steve is to taking down and winning the X Division Championship. Fingers on the belt of oh, the wow. champ. Sonata able to slide in and not crazy Steve all the way from the top. Well, Sonata does not want anyone to capture his X Division title, because at the moment, it is still his. Tough sledding here, defending it in this type of... Uh-oh, you see the ladder? 
I don't see this better days. I don't think you want to use that ladder anymore. Well, maybe not to climb. But you can always drop Crazy Steve on the ladder. This guy's a moonsault, moonsault specialist. And a lot of great mood up. Can yeah, he nail it? You asked for it, Taz, and you got it. by the X Division champion on to Crazy Steve. That Just got squashed in the ladder. That hurts like hell. You get crushed and sandwiched like that. With all that impact of velocity, and now Sonata looking good here to grab his X Division championship. Sonata regroups up to the second rung. Crowd loving this Slammiversary opening X Division. Title match, the ladder whoa, 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 match. Look at Tigre. Yeah, Tigre decided to go up the same side oh. as Sonata, and that's why. That was that was sick. What Tigre Uno just did, so hard, so dangerous. He makes it look easy. And now what? I don't know. I don't know what Tigre. Look. He's trying to make like a kind of like a bridge. Yeah. He wants to feed off a live crowd here. This Texas crowd is red hot. And he's taking the champion by the hair, pulling Sonata up the ladder. The hell's he got in mind? Oh. The two exchanging blows until Tigre finally able to toss Sonata down from the ladder, but from behind. And yeah, Eddie, Eddie. Here's the Wolves again. First it's Eddie. And Tigre. David, David's gonna fly here, Mike. David's gonna howl. Oh, oh my God! Wow! Davy Richards flying off the top, cracks the back of Tigre Uno, but you can see that Davy's favoring his leg and his knee. Let's take another look, Taz. Yeah, watch this! Wow! Oh. I'm about to pop something that now. Whoa, whoa, whoa! This, well, this is what I was saying, Mike. Face to face. The, the, the world tag top. team champions, Davy Richards and Eddie Edwards. We had wondered about if it comes down to this. Yes, it is every man for themselves. And the tag team champs both looking up at the title. You gotta slug gotta it out. Do you it. gotta, gotta do, it. do it. With the X Division Championship at stake, Richards and Edwards exchanging punches at the top of the ladder. And that's dangerous. Oh, Davy, headbutt, Eddie right back again. Look at this, the intensity because of the importance of this match. Oh my God, those headbutts. By Eddie. Eddie got the better of it on Davey Richards. And he's close. He, he's, he's groggy himself. Yeah, Eddie with his fingertips on the title. Little Sonata. Sonata back in the game here. Now watch this. Oh, the suplex. Oh, my. Oh, oh no, God. The bad landing that was outside. Tigre Uno all out there as well. But now Manic has Davey in the sight. Springboard right up onto the ladder. This is unbelievable. Manic, Davey Richards, both with their fingertips on the championship. All they have to do is unhook it, take oh, it down, oh, and become God. champion, but Manic using oh, the ladder Mike, as a Mike, weapon. Mike, Mike. Oh, no, no, Watch this. Whoa, 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 whoa. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Oh, my. I've never seen nothing like that in my life. He powerbombed him off the top onto the ladder. Look at the landing. I, I, I can't believe it. Let's take a look here. Just watch this. Inches away from taking down the title, but it's Eddie Edwards who comes in from behind. He's got his leg hook. Sonata going to reach up, and he takes it down. And Sonata keeps the championship. Your winner and still X Division champion, Sonata. Now that, my friends, is how you kick off a Slam Anniversary pay per view. Do you think? You need to take a bow and tip your cap for each one of those competitors. Because any one of them could have walked out of here with that X Division title. At the end of the day, Sonata got it done, captured his own title back. What a physical contest. What a spectacle that truly was. Great job by all the men. So many highlights from our opening 
X Division Championship ladder match, and it all started with Team Ray Uno. I don't know where you saw Mike. I mean, it was just move after move, massive move after massive move. The danger involved here, and it just shows how important, how vital to be the X Division Champion. The tradition, the history of that title. What these men put their bodies through here, live in front of us here from, from Texas. X Slumber versus shows how important that title is. And also with Destination X, Option C upcoming. Whoever the X Division champ is at that point can cash it in for a world championship shot. That's why we saw this kind of action. That was just sick, Tad. Uh, yeah, it was definitely sick. Everything was sick. The whole thing was nuts. I mean, and at the end of the day, like I said, Sonata able to, well, grab that title, grab his title, and remain X Division champ. That was an amazing match to kick off this, which we seem to have a tremendous slam adversity coming at you. Wow, no question about that. Terrific opening match with Sonata retaining X Division gold. There it is. Great job, that was great stuff. I mean, I'm talking, you talk physical, you talk danger, high risk, we just witnessed it, man, it's great. Mike Tanay and Taz, first we wish you a happy Father's Day. We welcome you to Slammiversary where tonight, Hall of Famer Kurt Angle will make the announcement as to who the newest inductee is into the TNA Hall of Fame. But first, Taz, we need to address this situation revolving around MVP. Well, yeah, on Friday after, after uh, Impact, on uh, Thursday, on Friday, I should say, what happened was we saw a tweet by TNA executive John Gaborg stating that, you know, due to a torn meniscus in his last match beating MVP, he's not medically cleared, so he cannot compete here this evening. So as a result, we will have two qualifying matches, Austin Aries versus Kenny King, Lashley versus Samoa Joe. The two winners, yes, they are going to advance to our Steel Cage main event, where they will challenge Eric Young for the World Heavyweight Championship. Well, now Eric Young's in a situation where tonight, you don't know who he's gonna face, and he has to face not one man, but two men to defend his TNA World title. So a totally different situation. Oh, speaking of MVP, hope you didn't piss him off, Mike. Well, sometimes you say things, you just piss people off. I do? Yeah, sometimes you do. A little bit. Director of Wrestling Operations. Impact in three. MVP. We talked about the torn meniscus. The situation that TNA found themselves in. And announcing the addition of the two qualifying matches. Kenny King and Lashley join MVP. Well, I have had several torn meniscus and have not had a surgery on them. And I can tell you, it's not fun. You cannot compete. There's no way, no how. You can't put weight on your knee. It's basically that simple. So. so let me get this straight. I'm supposed to be in the hospital with a serious torn meniscus, and this is how you treat me?
I've been censored by the board of directors. Not sure why, because everything that I've done has been nothing but make TNA better for all of you. Now, because the board of directors assured me that as director of wrestling operations, I have to provide a fair match, and because I'm incapable of uh, competing tonight, I'm going to give you a gift. Because you've been denied my magnificence, I'm going to bless you with my brilliance. Eric Young will still defend the TNA World Heavyweight Championship tonight in a steel cage. However, there's a little change. Bobby Lashley will face Samoa Joe in a one-on-one -on -one match. Kenny King will face Austin Aries in a one-on-one -on -one match. The winners of those matches will go on to the main event to compete for the TNA World Heavyweight Championship. I can't be any more fair than that. Right now, you should be on your knees applauding me, grateful that I'm going to give you a fair main event. And in the interest of fairness, I'm not going to be involved in Lashley's match, and I won't be involved in Kenny's match. Ain't that right, Kenny? Dallas, Texas, we came here to show you how to do it. Look at these three men. These are winners. These are champions. We're not like Tony Romo and them lame-ass Dallas Cowboys that can't win no playoff games. These guys know how to get it done. So tonight, Eric Young, ain't no way you're gonna walk out of this building as champion. And Austin Aries, the self-proclaimed greatest man that ever lived. Well, homie, the greatest mistake you ever made was showing up to this building to face Kenny King. You can call me Chef Kenny King tonight because I'm going to be surfing up ass whippings all night long. And Austin, there ain't no vegan recipe for that, bro. And on that note, you guys always talk about Joe is going to kill you. Joe is going to kill you. Joe, tell me when it's all said and done how it feels when the predator becomes the prey. Without further ado, lastly, do what you gotta do and let the carnage begin. Well, Lashley is on his own. No involvement, says MVP. The board of directors putting the pressure on MVP. TNA board of directors, they're watching MVP. His actions, Lashley's actions, and Kenny King's as well. Watching him like a hawk. I'm just fired up for this match that we're about to have right here. I'll tell you what, if you're a fan of any sort of grappling and, and just throwing hands and feet, you're gonna dig this. Samoa Joe and this man, Lashley, they're gonna hook it up right now. And his opponent, the Samoan submission machine, Samoan Joe. Listen to the reaction, the response to the Samoan submission machine. And I think when it came to the recent actions of MVP, Samoa Joe, I think he took it more personally just, than just about anybody else on the TNA roster. Samoa Joe, he vouched for MVP. He went to bat for it. He went all in. And then later, Samoa Joe called that the biggest regret of his wrestling life. Joe got a little hung up there. He should. You know, call the rule number one, man. Don't turn your back on your opponent, especially when his name is Lashley. But Joe can recover so quick, so well. 
Again, Lashley, just look at the snapping attack. The, I mean, the intensity and the snap and his physicality. Wow. Quick, he just got a three-point stance, fired out. Lowered the boom on the abdomen of Joe. The winner advances to challenge for the world heavyweight title. Both of these men, if you look at their career resumes, they have world title reigns. Samoa Joe, noted for that 18-month unbeaten streak after arriving in Ooh. TNA in 2005, and that kick arrived right on the side of the head of Lashley. Just imagine if you poor Eric Young, the TNA world champ. You gotta face one of these men tonight in a cage. Yeah, plus another plus opponent. Another guy. Yeah, the winner of Kenny King versus Austin Aries. Samoa Joe, Grand Slam champion, world heavyweight title holder, four-time X Division champ, two-time world tag team champion, as well as TV title holder. Quite a career here in TNA for the Samoan Submission Machine. Head of steam by Joe to that incredible leaping ability by Lashley. Well, Lashley's just a massive individual, and he has the athleticism and the vertical uh, height and jumping ability to just to clear a man the size of Joe is so impressive. How do you combine that kind of finesse, leaping over, and then following up with the power of the clothesline? You know, I see what you're saying about finesse. I look at it more of explosiveness. His first step explosion, the explosiveness in his, uh, 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 the way his muscles shot, his hamstrings, his quadriceps, the way he pops up like that. But right now, he's yeah, you talked about here. this. Yeah. You've mentioned the striking power of these two men. Lashley, pummeled in the corner by the right well, and the lefts, one after the other by Samoa Joe. You don't see this much that Lashley gets beaten down like this. I mean, and, 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 and you know, as you saw earlier in the match, Lashley was handling, was controlling Joe physically, but Joe able to shut him down. But Kenny can, can Joe sustain that. Lashley's smart to call timeout and break that momentum. It looked like Joe was lining Lashley up for the face wash. Before Joe could make contact, Lashley rolls out. Smart move here on Lashley's part to slow down Joe, in your opinion? Oh, yeah. Wait, well, wait, 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 wait. That's a Samoan freight train is what that is. That's the thing about Samoa Joe. I talked about the athleticism of Lashley. Watch the athleticism here of someone like Samoa Joe. That's what makes this match so intriguing. Either one of these men can enter that steel cage tonight, which one of them will, to face EY. One of the other guys was said either EY or Kenny King. And one of these guys can be crowned world champion with no problem. Austin Aries or Kenny King? Oh, is Samoa Joe with the headbutt for Lashley. As Joe following Lashley already, so, he, Samoa Joe just took his eye off the ball for a split second, and he pays. Well, Les is ruthless. He's not a kind individual. You know, and he, he will just, he will do whatever he has to do by any means necessary to shut you down. And we just saw him, you know, do that, and that's what you have to do for Les, because Joe was really cranking. Steel steps used by Lashley on Joe. Well, Lashley's got to try and get in here and break the count so he get counted out. Well, there's just no give to the side of the ring right there where Joe went back first. Lashley rolls in, goes for the cover, and quickly Joe escapes. You don't see Lashley get frustrated much, but he did a little bit there because Joe was able to uh, Joe was able to kick out quick. Double cross chop by Lashley. Follows with a corner clothesline and then a big overhand right. Well, you hear. Our audience here, uh oh, really behind Joe, Joe. But Lashley answers, elbows to the side of the head, and then the spinning neck breaker. Lashley might have been a little too big. And Watch too this powerful. cover. Oh, oh. Here's the lateral press, the pin in two for Lashley. Right back on it again, and another near fall. I think out of that corner, Joe was looking to get that patented urine not nagi type of slam that he does out of that corner, Mike. But wasn't able to get Lashley up. Sure looked like that's what Joe had in mind. Lashley applying the pressure to the back of the head of Joe while his neck is draped across the steel cable. Now it's striking power from He's Lashley. Trying to nail those cross faces and they're effective.
Drops the elbow with authority. Leads to another pin with the far leg hook. Joe able to get out just before three. Well, you can just see it's a full court press right now by Lashley. And right here, Joe's got to do what he's got to do to slow down Lashley, but good luck. Lashley able to rake his eyes and stop him, stop that flow from Joe. Look at this, look at that. Oh my God. Listen, he made that, uh, hold on here. Flawless execution of the suplex. Well, it was a snap suplex, and Lashley exemplified those quick hips, that explosive power he has to snap someone over with a snap suplex like he did. But it was the joke. ease in the way that he took yeah. a 300 pounder over. It's uh, so damn impressive. A move that we've seen over the years from pure fans. The great dynamite kid for the British sure. Bulldogs do the snap suplex. But how big Joe is for Lashley to do that was so impressive. Nerve hold applied to the trapezius muscles of Joe, who gets back up to that vertical base. Tried to get the offense going, but immediately shut down by Lashley. Lashley looks like he might be the driver's seat here to move on to face Eric Young for the world title, to be one of the men to face him in that steel cage tonight in our main event. He's looking good here, man, like it or not. A series of shots by Lashley. Well, you can just see the pain that Samoa Joe is in after those shots are driven right to the chest. And again, back to the grip, the nerve hold here against Joe. That hold can really numb up your whole shoulder and arm, especially when you have that power and the grip in the hands and the fingers and the wrist and the forearms of Bobby Lashley. Lashley's he's just built like a brick, you know what house, man. Look at him. The momentum of Lashley derailed by the Samoa Joe kick. Well, Samoa Joe, he says a Grand Slam champion. Yes, sir. When you are a Grand Slam champion, you got to be crushed. And that was a clutch moment to stop Lashley. Again, the winner of this match moves on to the Steel Cage World title bout as one of two challengers for Eric Young tonight. Off the inverted atomic drop. Joe off the ropes in the big boot. And the Centaur. 300 pound backsplash. Leg hook. Hefner counts two and just two. A quick reversal sends Joe into the corner. That time you got your Yurinagi, did you ask him? Well, he nailed it for sure. That was impressive by Joe. That's a big dude to get up like that. Gonna go for that rear naked choke. There he goes. Kakina clutch applied. Wise move by Lashley with the MMA experience as well as the wrestling experience to block that rear naked choke by backing Joe up into the corner. And from the corner mount, look at the way that Joe is able to turn Lashley around. That's amazing to me. You don't see that much by anyone. That was impressive. He made a look whoa, easy. Whoa, whoa. Muscle Buster, Muscle Buster, Lashley fighting it off. Yeah, Lashley able to get out of that, those quick shots to the face. And what a match here. Watch out, watch out, Earl. Almost hit the ref. Oh! oh! And when Joe turned around, he just got oh! speared out of his boots. Lashley the cover, and Lashley the pin, and he moves on. Your winner advancing to the steel cage match, Lashley! Well, that was just a, a second right there with Joe. Didn't want to run to the ref and get disqualified or something like that, so he slowed down. I'm sorry, he stopped. And as he turned, Lashley saw there was a little bit of an opening. He exploded right through the midsection. The midsection he attacked early in the match of Samoa Joe with a nasty spear. Wow. And you know that Director of Wrestling Operations MVP yeah, look, has look. to be celebrated because of this. Why wouldn't MVP? MVP can't compete as we stated because of an injury. Well, you know what? It looks good for MVP. If He's got one of his main men right here. The big bad Lashley for the gun in that steel cage after Eric Young and his title. And we still got to see what happens between that match tonight between Kenny King and Eric. Tremendously physical match with Lashley getting the victory over Samoa Joe. And as a result of Lashley's win, Taz, this is where we stand. We now know that Eric Young has one challenger in Lashley.
who will be his other challenger, Austin Aries or Kenny King? We'll find out later as we send it to our broadcast colleague, Jeremy Borash. Take it, JB. All right, thank you very much, Mike and Taz. I am here high in the rafters at the arena at Slammiversary in the Carter Family Party Suite. Bob, Janice, the whole family here. Dixie, if you could, please. Dixie Carter, if you could, please. Rockstar Spud here as well. Dixie, tonight, a huge night. What do you think so far? Slammiversary, look at the great crowd here tonight. I mean, my hometown, all these people that love me, my family and friends. I mean, what more could I ask? Everybody loves you, What could you ask? Maybe, uh, maybe an EC3 win tonight over Bully Ray? Well, I mean, that's a given, Jeremy. I mean, my gosh, you saw what Bully Ray and those three thugs did to him a few weeks ago. They drew Carter blood. Drew Carter blood. They messed with the wrong family. The wrong family. And I got to tell you, no one, no one has seen Ethan's vicious side. And if I had to guess, that's exactly what Bully Ray is going to see tonight. And he has all that and more coming to him. Let me ask you something. You tweeted earlier something in the week that you were here in Dallas earlier, had some high-level meetings. Tell us more about that. Who was that with? What was that about? Uh, now, while I appreciate you trying to do your job, finally, you don't do that with me. Yes, I had very important meetings this week, but I'm not going to be sharing those details until I am standing in the middle of the ring and the entire world is watching and listening. <laughs> Maybe just a hint, something Absolutely tonight? Absolutely not. Absolutely not. Well, I'll I give you one little thing. You know what they say about karma, right? Well, I think karma bit Mr. MVP in the butt. His big plan to win the world title and steal the main event tonight, and he blew out his knee. How tragic. Well, all I can say is, if you think that's bad, you don't know what's coming at you. You're warned. <laughs> Jeremy, that's enough. We're having come a party on, in here. On, Borash, get out of you it. take and off. Come on, get out of it. Don't you, right. touch you, don't you touch the food. Thank you. Get out of it. All right. Get out of it. Jeez, Spud is just like a starburst. <laughs> the a free contest scheduled yeah, for one right. fall. Introducing first, accompanied by Bram, Madness! Well, we finally saw the side of Magnus that Bram had been trying to bring out Taz for several weeks. And you can just see the appearance, the difference in Magnus. I mean, this is... The true Magnus, I guess. I mean, the, the, the one that Bram grew up with. And, you know, not, not, the, not the, you know, extremely expensive custom-made suits and Italian leather shoes that are a thousand bucks a pair. This guy's a rugged chap for sure. You can see it. You can see that of him the past few weeks. And his opponent, this is Will. Wacky, crazy Willow. Yes, the alter ego of Jeff Hardy to face the man who beat Jeff Hardy for the World Heavyweight Championship in Magnus. But, but Taz, as we found out this past Thursday night on Impact Wrestling, Willow is not Whoa. alone tonight here in Big D. No, no, he's not. But hold on, that's got a little freaked out right there because he ran by me. This world is a little nuts. He's very unpredictable. A little nuts. Slow down, bro. Slow down. Here we go. Oh, picking up speed. Sprint, oh, sprint, sprinting and springing off the broadcast table. Hope he doesn't blow up out here. Whoa, 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 whoa. I'm blowing up. Watch him. You're afraid of the umbrella. But he's so, he's, he's, I'm saying he's unpredictable. He's just, he's like a, one of those cars that goes really fast. What do you call it? Like a drag racer? Yeah. And then it dives down. Oh, he's right here again. Take a seat, bro. I don't, I don't know what to say. He's just... Oh, get that kid off. That was my kid. Get my kid. I pulled the cops up. He's nuts. Told you he had backup. Yeah. The monster. The monster. Thursday night that he would have 
the monster in his corner. We then saw the physicality between these four men erupt. And one anticipates that the same thing could happen here tonight, even though this is, on paper, a singles matchup with Magnus versus Willow. Yeah, you know, matches, they might be uh, written on paper, they, they don't wrestle on paper, nope. so, so you gotta really uh, see what Magnus has got in him here. This is a history with Magnus. Along with Abyss, we've seen, oh well, about a month and a half ago, right? Two months ago on Impact Wrestling. Sure. And then everything just changed up. Magnus. Abyss is a, I'm sorry, Mike, Abyss, I can just look at him real quick. He's looking at Magnus like he wants to rip his head off, and he's not even in a match, Abyss. And you notice that Willow, the momentary distraction when he went to look and go for Bram, that was the opening that Magnus needed, and he is on him at the outset. This, Taz, a side of Magnus that, quite honestly, we have never seen before. You think about Magnus when he was a tag team wrestler, when he was the world champion, first British-born world champion in over 100 years, by the way. Yes. But then what we saw with the attack by Magnus, that crowbar, that steel pry bar that he used, well, it was a violent side of Magnus, that, that, to your point, yeah, that we've never, never seen. Yeah. And Bram was telling the world that's in him and wanted, Bram wanted Magnus to pull it, you know, bring it out. Well, he did. Oh, watch out, Willow. Willow's on the hop here. Oh, oh went to slide at Magnus, who pulled that apron cover back. Oh, shots by, by Magnus, clubbing blows, just pounded on Willow. Nothing fancy there, man. Type of stuff you'd see in some pub on uh, London Avenue there in London. What is that big L street that gets? Yeah, London Avenue. London, Avenue. Yeah. London Boulevard. Sure. Is it London yeah. Bridge? Sure. London Avenue. Max rolls Willow back in and gets a two count. Right back on him again with another pin attempt. And in all the pin attempts, Magnus takes the forearm and has it positioned right across the face of Willow, just to add a little bit extra. Yeah, you want to drive your form across the, actually, his jawbone, his wow. cheek, cheekbone. Look at that clothesline. God. Talk about exploding through somebody. Decapitation clothesline by Magnus. And I like this side of Magnus. I like what Bram brought out of him. I really do. It's an intense, a physical, physical side of Magnus that works. Thanks to Bram. Bram brought it out. And at the same time, Willow told us that while Magnus may have found himself, that he has awakened something in Willow. To this point in the match, though, it has been mostly Magnus. Hardy going to try and roll through, rather, Willow, but Magnus able to stack him up first with a pin attempt, and then... Wow! Oh, oh man! With that throwaway powerbomb-style move. Leads to a cover and two. That's, that's really difficult to do. Great strength and power by Magnus. You can see the way Magnus is built. He's powerful as hell, but he exemplified it there. Look at these forearm shots right to the face. Stuff you'd see when someone's getting beat down on the street. So. And that's exactly what Bram had been trying to bring out of Magnus. Telling Magnus, telling the world that he had gone soft. Anything but with the actions that we saw from Magnus on Impact Wrestling as well as here tonight. Bram's a motivator, right? Sure. Kind of right. And well, not a motivational speaker. That would be entertaining. But it's motivational to, Mag to Magnus. He's in inspired Magnus. Mike Verdict. Suplex. Another pin attempt and credit. another two count. Give him credit, Bram. Give the guy some credit. It's inspiring. Uh, what do you give him some credit? Ah, you're not giving him enough credit. Really? Out. You're kind of knocking him. Oh, I was putting him over. Happy Father's Day. All right. <laughs> Same right back at you. Thank you. And look at this. Wear down right here. Magnus with that weird choke. Bram loves it. Oh, couldn't be happier. And Bram's a bloodthirsty fella, huh? Oh, you man. You think? Well, you got big bad monster abyss on the abyss on the outside. You never know what he's gonna do. Well, he's there to instill fear as well as watch the back 
of Willow, but I don't think there's much fear from Magnus and Bram, at least to this point, well, when it comes to well, anybody. Yeah, but Bram's not dumb. He can't get near that ring because he knows that the monster abyss will be all over. Again, that history with Abyss looking at Magnus. When Magnus throwing that time when he was the world champion. Crowd, full support for Willow. Trying to get Willow back into this match. It'll wear him down. He's gonna choke him out here, possibly. Right. Referee, Brian Hebner has a two. Oh, one more, one more. Yep, yep. Not so fast, my friend. He did like a little Jim Dandy with his hand and he was down there. Did you see that? I did see that. Like a, a little. Looks like a little Jim Dandy. <laughs> Duck into the clothesline. Willow explodes. Striking blow that takes Magnus down. Caught him in the head. Inspiration from the monster for Willow, much like we have seen throughout this match and see it now from Bram to Magnus, who turns right in to the inverted atomic drop. And the unpredictable Willow. Well, maybe a page out of the Jeff Hardy playbook there. You think? <laughs> in tight drop kick, follow pin, legs hook, no, just two. Oh! And Willow knows how to keep it going, coming at you. And Magnus. Not able to stop this attack here. Oh, by Willow. Oh, both ah. boots right into the chest of the Brit. Well, Willow's got to try to capitalize here on this tremendous oh, 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 offense. Went to he's the twist, out. though. Oh, oh. Twist of fate. Blocked by Magnus. Uh -oh. Didn't block the boots. You know what time it is now. Willow straight down. Here's the splash. Here's the pin. And here's the two count. For a second, I thought we were going to see a little swan tonis action, but he didn't go to the, to the top. As the kids say, the tears up. <laughs> rapper, kid, kid, the kids are talking carny now, huh? You know, hip hop rappers, they say that stuff. Hold on here, lock, 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 lock. High risk with zero oh, reward. See what I told you. Graham's involvement stopped by the there monster. We go. The entire reason that Willow has <laughs> Abyss at ringside in his corner. Check out that physicality. Rights and lefts, big strikes and big blows from the monster Abyss to Bram. A Bram's a brawler, but the Abyss is just too big. He needed Magnus to help him. Now Magnus. Look at those shots right there, right yeah, to the he's mid got, section. He's got damn Abyss defenseless outside with Magnus hooking him from behind. Bram laying in the shots. Whoa, 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 whoa. Uh -oh. Watch uh -oh. Willow, watch oh, Willow, whoa, watch Willow. Oh, 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 my God. Little Miss T plunge. Backwards. Skull almost spotted here. That's why we have deemed him the most unpredictable man in wrestling as you see shot after shot of the amazing Willow. Abyss rolls Bram in. And now Bram laying in rights and lefts. A clothesline for the Abyss. 350 in the corner stacks up Bram. And then the monster clears the ring. That's how he does it, man. He can get. You got that size and that power, that intensity. You can do whatever you want. Willow. Magnus springs back. One more time, just for good measure. Follow pin. Here's the cover. He's and got him. He's got him. Oh, that was Whoa. close. That was real close right there. On the verge of victory was Willow. Willow got to give it to Magnus after the Willow, twist Willow, of Willow, Willow, Is that that pry bar again? Uh, yeah, no, no, no. It's no. the turnbuckle corner. Got a steal. 
piece that connects. Wait, wait, Mike, Mike, wait, wait. wait. Whoa. Well, isn't it appropriate that, that we bring Janice out in Dallas? <laughs> Brad just put down that turnbuckle. All right, you win. Your gun's bigger than mine. <laughs> Oh my God, Bram, you better get out of there. Whoop, whoop, whoop. The monster stalking Bram. Bram's up. Watch out. Willow got the elbow up when Magnus charged in. Oh! And before Willow can get positioned up on top, he's cut off by Magnus, who charges him down. Oh, man, powers him, covers. Great Magnus job, Ray's got him. Sure was. Wow. Your winner, Magnus! Look at the eyes of Magnus. It tells the story. Great job by Bram. I don't know. I, I think it was on purpose. He drew. He drew Bram did a bit from that ring. And it worked perfectly. Great job by Magnus. That's a big victory right there. Uh-oh. Getting a, bit, a little pissed off now. Monster not done. Janice in hand. In the second that he hits the ring, Magnus and Bram decide that maybe their post-match celebration would be better up the ramp. Yeah, bitch looks livid. I don't blame him. It just was what happened to Willow, but. I mean, I, I, to me, you got to give a very good, hey, that a boy, great job to Magnus, because I thought that was a very impressive victory for the new and improved in my book, Magnus. You know, Taz, I could not agree with you more. Super physical matchup at Slammiversary with Magnus scoring the win. You know, earlier tonight, we mentioned our French announce team, Cillian Barini and Gregory Dees. Taz, what do you say we send it over to our broadcast partners from MCS? Okay, there they are. C'est le début de la soirée. Et bien entendu, vous savez que notamment il y a un match entre Austin Aries et Kenny King qui va être très important pour savoir qui sera le troisième homme qui va se qualifier pour le match final, qui va se qualifier pour le main event. Une chose est sûre, c'est que ça va être énorme, Gregory. Je suis étonné, mais il va parler de l'autre. Well, you like to translate? Oh yeah, it seems like they're having a good time in Dallas. They're used to, used to eating croissants, now they're eating biscuits and gravy. I want a burger. <laughs> Balou, salou. Sabu, balou, sa sabu, salou. My guys, I got friend. you. Happy Father's Day to you, too. You're welcome. Latest member of TNA's Hall of Fame to be announced tonight by the Olympic gold medalist, Kurt Angle. Taz, what does it mean to be part of such an exclusive fraternity? I would have to say it's validation. It's validation of what you've done in your career that an organization, a worldwide organization like TNA Wrestling, is, is basically uh, saying, hey, we're, we're gonna witness that, we're gonna, we're gonna validate you. And you're in our Hall of Fame, it's huge, man. As a, as a former wrestler, that's a great thing. Uh, in sports entertainment and pro wrestling or whatever you wanna call it, it's, it's, it's tremendous. And now, to set the stage for our Hall of Fame announcement from Kurt Angle, we send it to JB. Thank you very much, Mike and Taz. Here we are in the great state of Texas. Here we are at Slammiversary. And it has become a Slammiversary tradition to announce the next member of the TNA Wrestling Hall of Fame. Here now to announce the next member of the Hall of Fame is our 2013 Hall of Fame inductee the Olympic gold medalist, Kurt Angle.
the credibility right there. 13 time, 13 time world heavyweight champion. Wow, thank you, Dallas, Texas. First of all, I'd like to thank the board of directors for allowing me to come out here to make this announcement. Being inducted into the TNA Wrestling Hall of Fame, you know you've reached a level of greatness. A level of greatness that's respected by every wrestler in the back, past, present, and future. It's a level of greatness, most importantly, that's respected by all of you, the fans. And for that, I am very grateful. Thank you. Well, thank you. Hey, I'm not retired yet. Don't be thanking me now. Okay, here we go. Your 2014 TNA Wrestling Hall of Fame inductee, which will be inducted at Bound for Glory and announced here tonight at Slammiversary, is... Well, let's just say... They're quite possibly the greatest tag team of all time. Ladies and gentlemen, Team 3D.
seriously, seriously, listen to me. That is the best we want tables, Chad, we've heard in forever. Listen to this. Hey, I cannot even begin to tell you how great it is to be standing in this ring with you again. Me and Devon accept the Hall of Fame induction, and we accept it for one reason and one reason only. Because of every single one of you. For our entire career, each and every single one of you are responsible for taking and making Team 3D the most successful team in the history of professional wrestling. You know, last August, when I left TNA, I vowed not to come back because basically I thought I was done. I thought I was through. But, thank you, but you know, then I got the phone call saying that we were gonna be inducted into the TNA Hall of Fame. Well, you know something? This man right here, I've been up and down the highways with creating history, winning one tag team title after the other. And it's only fitting that if we're gonna go out, we need to go out together. And if that means going out in the Hall of Fame, like you say, let's go out in a blaze of glory. You damn right. So, with that, without any further ado, Oh, my brother! Testify! Oh, testify! <laughs> that was awesome. <laughs> Couldn't agree more. Goose bump moment. Oh, that's great. And slap that's anniversary great. here in Dallas. Soak it in, guys. You deserve it. Hey, man, I saw these two guys fall as a team from Jump Street from day one. I've had that opportunity to witness that. Guys like myself, guys like Tommy Dreamer, we've been there and seen the work and time and effort, the blood, sweat, and tears they put in. They damn well deserve this.
Well, and ladies and gentlemen, what big news we just witnessed. Brother Ray, Brother Devon, Team 3D, headed to the TNA Wrestling Hall of Fame. And speaking of Bully Ray, going to ask my guest at this time for his comments. Ladies and gentlemen, E C three. Don't you just love the pomp and the circumstances that comes to the TNA Hall of Fame? JB, did you know I beat the very first inductee, Sting? And then I became the new icon of wrestling. And then I went ahead and I beat Kurt Angle, therefore becoming the new face of American wrestling. So it's almost fate that Bully Ray is being inducted into the Hall of Fame because when I beat him tonight in a Texas death match, I'm gonna become, I'm gonna become the, the hardcore American icon. Bully Ray, in this narrative, you are not a hero. You are a villain. You have threatened my family time and time again. But tonight, we're in Dallas. And this is Von Eric country, my keister, meester. No, 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 no. This is Carter country. Tonight, tonight I fight for grandma, grandpa, EC2, TC3, the whole Carter clan. But most importantly, my Aunt D. Bully Ray, do you know who I am? I'm a Carter and the world needs us. Is it EC2? TC1? TC the fully contest is scheduled for one fall, and the winner will advance to the steel cage match for the World Heavyweight Championship. Introducing first from Las Vegas, Nevada, Kenny King. Well, let's focus on how important this matchup is. If Kenny King is victorious here over Austin Aries, in essence, Eric Young's gonna find himself in a handicap match inside the cage for the World Heavyweight title because of Lashley's earlier victory tonight over Samoa Joe. Well, we could definitely see that happen, but I think this man coming out right now might have something to say about that. And his opponent from Milwaukee, Wisconsin, Austin Aries. You know, Austin Aries was right. So outspoken negatively about MVP right from the start, right from the outset. And while MVP can call Aries the greatest ego that ever lived, Austin Aries, I think, was one step ahead of all of us. I agree. And got sent home because of it. Yeah, well, Aries smelt a certain scent coming off of MVP and did not trust it. You see right there, I think those were some of the members, I believe that might have been some of the members of the Dallas Cowboys there. I think that's who that was. Yes, members of the Dallas Cowboys around ringside here at Slammiversary, yeah, because of the importance of this great TNA pay-per-view event. Yeah, there they are. Well, oh, there they were. <laughs> Anyways, let's see here. So Kenny King's got an opportunity here to make the man MVP proud. If he can beat Aries, go on with Lashley in that steel cage to take apart EY in that TNA title. And what a history these two men have. You know, it extends to even before they first cross paths here in TNA. But to me, Kenny King's, well, biggest career win was when he captured the X Division title from RVD. Oh, go. Oh. Full speed drop kick in the corner by Aries. Gonna try and go brain buster early on. Gonna try and beat him here in the first minute of the match. But no, Kenny King escapes. I like that thought process by Aries because King never expected that. Nobody did. For him to try and get the well, 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 Nobody expected that either. Aries flies with a double sledge off the top. Austin Aries not playing around. He knows there's a massive opportunity here to come back to be the TNA World Champion in this same evening here tonight at San Anniversary. Touched on the history 
talked about the huge win when Kenny King beat RVD for the title. Kenny held it until Slammiversary, June 2013, and in that X Division rematch, he lost to an imposter, Suicide, later revealed that under the suicide mask, none other than Austin Aries, who drops the elbow, leads to the pin, and, oh, an ear fall. Aries again, as we had mentioned, going to try and put King away early on, and oh, oh. gets crutched in the corner when yeah. King makes a desperation Ooh. leap, but it pays off, followed up by a perfectly executed kick that drills Aries and sends him to the floor. Yeah, great job by Kenny King. This kid's just a tremendous athlete. He is just full steam ahead. Look at wow. that. Oh, Slingshot, twisting in mid-air. Goes King crashing down onto Aries. What I like most personally about Kenny King, it's not just his ability, it's not just his credibility, it's his confidence, that swagger, that cockiness. Sometimes it hurts him. Yeah, sometimes it bites him in the ass, is what it does. It does. He's, he's a wild oh, card, he's a hothead, is oh, steel guardrail. Gets bit by Aries, courtesy of Kenny King. Steel guardrail went a little limp. <laughs> I tell him, I got him. I'm win. I know. Tell him. See, that's what I'm saying. He's confident. Well, that's obvious. He's telling you. Kenny King wants me to tell him. I got it, Kenny. I'll tell the world. He's going to win. Well, I agree with him. King of the night. Kenny King going to try and follow up the advantage that he has here on Aries. Using the side of the ring as part of his game plan. You see him like that. You see him? Yeah, we see it. Sometimes certain competitors, they need to have that. They need to have that type of, you know, talk that smack and have those outbursts and be that confident. That makes the, well, that makes, that makes their motor run. You know what I mean? And, sure. and that's, that's what a Kenny King is. King right back on Aries. And again, the winner of this match joins Eric Young wow. and Lashley stepping inside the steel cage with the world championship at stake. That all later tonight here at Slammiversary in Dallas, Texas. Kenny King, again, knows for that nice job right there, knows. Again, this is an opportunity for him, just like it is for Aries, Boop, to go on in that main event tonight and be one of the challenges towards the TNA World Champion, Eric Young. And the other challenger is his buddy, meaning he and Kenny King with, with Lashley. So be a handicap match is what it would be. Yeah, but Kenny King still got to get past Austin Aries. Nice hip toss right there. First that knee, then a hip lock. Good job. Aries' offense gets stalled immediately because of the physicality of King. Austin Aries, no stranger to the world heavyweight title that he potentially could challenge for later tonight. Aries has held the X Division Championship on four occasions, and he originated option C, the ability to turn in the X Division title and challenge for the world championship at Destination X. And that possibility of option C coming up here in TNA is just weeks away. Look at this, Aries, oh, he got caught, but great counter. Off the roll up, King uses his leg strength to stop Aries from gaining the pin. Well, you see what Aries is trying to do, he's trying to string together a few moves just to stop the arsenal oh, of Kenny King, and boxing his ears like that, that might do the trick. <laughs> Yeah, to this point, Aries has not been able to do it. He had the quick flurry right at the start of the match. Went for the brain buster. What would you say? 10, 15 seconds in. I had to be out. Maybe 12 seconds. Watch <laughs> out. Oh. <laughs> oh, good job right there by Aries. For the first time in the match, we're seeing Aries mount an offense. That time, punctuated by the dive.
There he's got something to mind because he didn't get all the way in the ring. He stayed on the apron, as you can see here. Going to take Kenny Kane corner to corner. Turnbuckle to turnbuckle. That'll knock you out, man. I'm telling you, those turnbuckles, people don't realize how hard they actually are. That padding over it is not too thick. I'm telling you that from experience. You just scramble somebody brain, somebody's brains real easy with that. Back and forth on and that one. From the apron. Wow. Aries applies the neck breaker. And we saw Kenny King head neck snap back off the ropes. Aries has King exactly where he wants him. Greatest man that ever lived explodes with a missile drop kick. Leads to the cover. Near leg hook. Kenny escapes before three. Just a second away for Austin Aries to go on and challenge for the world heavyweight title tonight against Eric Young and Lashley. He was close there, Aries, man. Got himself a nice cradle throw right there. Didn't clasp the hands, didn't need to. That could be infringement right there. GI, GI. <laughs> Here comes King of the Night. Aries avoids the contact in the corner. Yeah, be careful though, Aries. Kenny King. Ooh, ooh. Could be playing, could be playing possum. I don't know. Well, maybe not after that. It's a good way to swell up an areola. <laughs> On Father's Day. That sucks. Oh! Ooh. King gets the boot up and then Look at that. drilled him to the top of the head with the kick. Spinebuster pin and attempt to use the ropes for leverage. Referee Cut Brian Hebner doing a good job right there. But Kenny King not too happy with Hebner not backing down. He's the authority figure doing the right thing. Discus forearm shot. Aries stacks up King for two. Oh, he's there got that last chancery Mike. Sure does. And he's got it hooked. You hear the last audience. chancery applied. The submission. Oh, listen, listen. Is King going to tap? Is Aries going to move on? Oh. Couldn't put him away. Oh. Couldn't get the tap out or the submission win. Instead, King explodes right back. Goes out to the floor. Now goes spring board and snaps the neck of Aries. This could be it. Kenny on top. King of the night. No, just two. Kenny King might still be feeling the effects a little bit of that last chancery. No, Aries didn't have it on too long. He had on, I, I thought maybe long enough to get a tap out, but not enough. One of these two men steps into the cage later tonight and vies for the world heavyweight title. Ferocity of the offense that we've seen from both Kenny King and Austin Aries shows you just how important that opportunity is here tonight later at Slammiversary. Now, what's this about? Oh, this might be the end right here of Austin Aries. Oh my God. We're going to see Lashley and Kenny King challenge him in that steel cage tonight. But check out those elbows driven to the side of the head of Kenny oh, King. Wait, wait, maybe I spoke too soon. You're right, Mike. And Aries Let's is see. able to turn wait, around. Wait, wait, wait. He's into the Your winner advancing to the steel cage match, Austin Aries. I didn't think that was going to happen. I got to tell you, I thought for sure Kenny King was in the driver's seat. What you got there, those ropes and on those ropes. Awesome job by Austin Aries. Wow. Super competitive matchup, as you would expect, with a world title shot at stake, and Austin Aries prevails. Here's the highlights. Well, yeah, basically, you saw the physicality, and both men taking a lot of chances. Because again, they know how important an opportunity at the World Heavyweight Championship is, especially in the steel cage. 
but really left it all out here in the ring. At the end of the day, that did it right there for Austin Aries. Brain Buster City, I don't care who you are, you're not kicking that lat off those ropes. One more is what Austin Aries is telling the crowd here in Dallas. Because with that win, he now has a chance to once again become heavyweight champion of the world. MVP must be pissed. Now official, we know where we stand. Steel cage later tonight. World title at stake. Two challengers for EY, Lashley and Austin Aries. You talked about this earlier in attendance here at ringside at Slammiversary. Members of the NFL's Dallas Cowboys led by starting defensive end George Selby. Nick Hayden's there. Caesar uh -huh. Rayford, Martel Wilson, Ben Bass, Tyrone Crawford. Cowboys in the house in Big D and so is JB. Thank you very much, Mike. A great night here in Dallas. We'd like to welcome the Dallas Cowboys here tonight. Wow, and mix, ladies and gentlemen, wow, like the Dallas Cowboys, there are huh. things that are synonymous that with the great state of Texas. <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, this family has been the benchmark of professional wrestling, not only across the world, but specifically here in Texas for almost six decades. They are royalty here in the Lone Star State and the wrestling fans around the world. Tonight, we will introduce the next generation of their family into the professional wrestling world. Ladies and gentlemen, it is my pleasure to introduce to you Ross, Marshall, and Kevin, the Von Erics. Welcome to TNA Impact Wrestling. Welcome to Slammiversary. And you, Kevin, happy Father's Day. It is that. It is that. It's so good to be here. So much been, so many good memories among so many good friends, so many good fans. And I introduce my sons on this great Father's Day. Great to be Texas. God bless Texas. Ladies and gentlemen, Ross Marshall and Kevin the Von Erics. It's a pretty cool moment here. Another one here tonight at Slammiversary. How many times have we said that? Oh, no, wait a minute. Mavericks. 
Yeah. Being a Dallas Cowboy. <laughs> Not tight. Not tight. Most importantly, being a Von Erich isn't tight. Well, at least DJZ don't have his uh, turntables. Yeah, that is a bonus. Matter of fact, it? we don't like the Von Erics. Hell, we don't like Texans in general. Oh, 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 you guys think you're so big and bad. You got your big ropes, your lasso stuff. Hey, you know what? We got that up north. We call them jump ropes. And you know who loves them? Little girls. How about the mohawk? DJZ going a little rad. So why don't you boys take off those shirts and let's do this right now. So what do you think? Is the Mohawk tight? Not really. Not really. Not tight. You just saw, unfortunately, an experience by Von Erich there by Ross and Marshall taking their shirts off, turning their back, and they got attacked. Well, let's see what these two young men have here. But right now, Jesse. Yeah, against Marshall. Von Erich, 21 years of Whoa. age, wrestles barefoot. Like his dad did. Yep, and there's his dad who. Father's Day treat for Kevin watching. National TV debut of the Von Eric brothers. Von Eric's trained by the legendary Harley Race. And they have also been trained at the Noah Dojo in Japan. Oh, he's got the hand up like the, yeah. the claw. Setting up for that iron claw made famous initially by the father of Kevin Von Erich, Fritz Von Erich, full speed oh. now sandwiched in the corner is Marshall. Well, you never know here, I mean, for the Von Erichs, this, ooh, Marshall could be having a little stage fright here. This is a big moment here. This is a, <laughs> place is packed here on a, a, a live pay-per-view. Expectations are high. Absolutely, at Slammiversary, none left. And look at this. It's Marshall. You keep in mind, Marshall's 21 years of age. Well, yeah, he's a young man, but he's got a lot of yeah, power. Sure does. Tag is in. Brother Ross, 26 years old, now legal. Whoa. Connects with the drop kick for DJZ one more time. A great extension in the middle of the body on that drop kick. Yeah, those drop kicks also reminiscent of his dad's offense. Elevated out to the apron, able to block DJ Z. Answers with the right hand, but Jesse sneaking around. Going before Ross can come flying off the top. Jesse of the Broman's able to knock him down. Ooh. The oh, DJ Z. Flies with the flip dive up the ramp. Well, as great as the Von Erichs were back in the day, you didn't see that type of offense back in True. world class. I don't think so. No, I don't think uh, you would see that much back in the day. Going to try and put them away here in their national TV debut. DJZ follow pin. Not enough. Tags into Jesse. Ah, wow, listen to this Our audience here. It's like going back in time. I get it. It's like going back in time. We have the sportatorium. What's going on here? <laughs> Check out the adrenaline rush for Ross with the forearm shots, but he turns around and eats the drop kick. Little quad flex in there, missed the leg drop. Nice sunset flip. Can he nail it here? Jesse's hanging on. Yeah, Jesse fights it off. Oh! Quickness of Ross Von Eric. Able to avoid that shot. Meanwhile, look how quick DJ Z is. Oh! Whoa! Right through the legs. Tag is in. Marshall Von Eric now legal. This kid's strong. You can just see the there power. He is. There's that Von Eric drop kick. He's a big one. And there's kid. that Von Eric fight. Corner clothesline for Jesse. Ditto for DJ Z with impact. Yeah. He's 
got that claw up in the hand. Oh. Look at his dad is filled it too. Ow! Shots from behind. Watch Ross up on top. Oh! Dual missile drop kick. Going for the kill right here. Going for the kill, kid. You got it. Watch the double team on DJZ. Oh! Oh! What a shot! Wait, 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 wait. Jesse, to try and introduce a chair. Oh, instead, the drop kick of the chair by Ross sends Jesse out. Jawbreaker inside. DJZ first on Marshall, then turns his attention to Ross. Maybe he shouldn't have done that. Those are some rugged forearms. Shades wow. of his dad, Cemento. <laughs> <laughs> Trust so you me. Said, you sound like you have personal experience in that regard. No comment. But right now, look at this. <laughs> Ross and then Marshall. Good job. Nicely done with the double team. Then the Marshall snap Ooh. there. And the punt by Ross Von Eric. Oh! Watch out, watch out with that chain. Oh, my oh, God. Oh. when he did it, why wouldn't it be? <laughs> the Knockouts Championship on the line. Gail Kim challenging my guest at this time, Knockouts Champion Angelina Love, of course, along with Velvet Sky. And Angelina Love, I have to ask you, are you ready for Gail Kim tonight? <laughs> oh, JB, I was born ready, okay? And I just have one question for Gail Kim. Please tell me how she can consider herself to be the best knockout of all time when I am, in fact, the most decorated champion in the history of the knockouts division. History. Six times. Six times, Gail. And that is something even you will never beat. Well, ladies, let's be honest. I mean, six times, yes. You've won the knockout championship six times. Yeah. How many times have you won this knockouts championship without Velvet Sky's help? I mean, maybe one, two are times. Are questioning me? What are you saying, JB? How dare you insult Angelina like that? What, just because we're besties and we do everything together, mm -hmm. you're gonna hold that against us? Ugh. Let me tell really? you something. That's how the beautiful people roll. We show up together, we do our makeup together, and then we go out there and we kick some ass together. And that is why we are called the beautiful people. Mm. People, because we are two. Mm. Get familiar. Mm -hmm. And really? two is always more fun than just one. So, Gail, see you out there, sweetheart. All right, they are on their way to the ring. Angelina Love set to defend the Knockouts Championship against Gail Kim next here at Slammiversary. JB, you're right on the money. Title match number two tonight at Slammiversary. It's on deck. Knockouts Championship at stake. I 
like Gail's chances. I mean, look, I'm a big Andrew Love fan. I know you are too, Mike. You love the beautiful people. But Gail Kim, I don't know. I just think this is her night. We saw it this past Thursday night on Impact Wrestling. Gail Kim cemented her position as the number one contender, winning a three-way matchup over Brittany and Madison Rain. Might recall in the commentary, we had the beautiful people out at the broadcast table, that Angelina wanted Brittany, calling her a heck of a competitor, claiming that Gail Kim is obsessed with the Knockouts Championship. Velvet Sky, she got up with that hairspray, blinded Brittany by mistake. It was time for eat defeat. And as a result, Gail Kim is in line for a shot at the goal. Yeah, you know, I don't know. I, I don't want to speak for Angela Love, but I don't know if she's too crazy about the fact that she has to face Gail Kim right now and defend that knockout title. Well, she'll tell you otherwise, along with the fact that she's a six-time knockouts champion, record setting, by the way. You, you know as well as I do, dealing with somebody like Gail Kim, first ever knockouts champion, it's going to be a tough test for the champion. One hot trump card, if you're asking me, <laughs> for Angelina. That trump card or bump card is, well, <laughs> Velvet Sky. I pop myself on it. I go, you see, my own jokes go through my head. Is that what it is? Uh, not, yeah, I guess. Ankle sweep right there, legs, foot sweep, I should say, by Gail Kim. I'm a little disjointed there. You know, the knockouts out here with right. Texas. It's a hot night. A little crazy, you know what I mean? You know exactly what you mean. Father's Day. <laughs> That's nothing to do with it, but I hear you. <laughs> nice reversal right there. Let's see, get whoa. whoa. See that? I like that. You don't see that much. No, it's the way you up. vary things up. I love oh, it. Oh, wow. What a shot. Running forearm. Leads to a pin for the challenger who gets the quick two count on champion Angelina Love. Again, another pin attempt here as Angelina wow, is able that. to bridge out. That is. Nice a beautiful strength. counter. Yes, excellent strength by Angelina, but Gail Kim, former champion herself, and just a veteran, and, and able to shut down Gail after that nice. Wow. Oh, oh. Wow. Oh, that might, that's bad right there. Yeah, it looked like Gail Kim went off the ropes and was going to attempt a hurricane rana. Angelina with other thoughts. And Angelina, the champ, quickly on top for another pin attempt. Yes, Gail, first ever knockouts champion dating back to the year 2007. Here in TNA, Angelina Love became the six-time champ at our Sacrifice pay-per-view event back in April when she defeated Madison Rain. And you know, Angelina, she's just got a definite mean streak, but so does Gail Kim. But I mean, it depends who's meaner. Who's, who's tougher? That's why we're here. We'll see. And oh, just the way that Angelina flings Gail into the corner, back first into the turnbuckles. The yeah. lovely blonde versus the lovely brunette, Mike. True. Botox, the, Botox injection versus heat defeat. I looked over at our French announce team over there. They're over there cracking up laughing. They love this. Polly Vu! Polly Vu! Oh. Straight down goes the challenger. Champ on top for two. 
Got to keep the pressure on Gale. You got to. Oh, that's huh. exactly what the champion has done. And the challenger tossed out wow. at the feet of Velvet Sky, and that's going to be trouble for Gale. Oh. You know, it's tough here for Gale to stay focused on the task at hand. You just can't blame her. But at the same time, you fall prey to a move like this from behind from Angelina Love. Well, that's all that Angelina needed was that little bit of distraction. Oh. Oh. Oh, wow. oh, oh, oh. What I was going to say was that's all Angelina needed was a little distraction. But Gale Kim able to reverse it. It was a nasty landing to those steel steps on Angelina. Challenger oh now. She's all right. She hit those. She hit yeah, those steps. Bad, bad landing awkwardly. into the steel steps. Is it awkward or awkwardly? Awkwardly. Got it. How quickly Gale's able to go up and then hmm. gets caught from behind. Yeah, it's definitely by not Angelina. Definitely not a yam bake shot, but <laughs> no. I hear you. Hold on here. Let's see. Velvet's. Oh, 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 oh man. Wow. Sort of an inverted bulldog type move out of the corner. Yeah, but Gale's. Ooh. Just the way that her, her body. Neck, yeah, like kind of an awkward fall sure there. It was. That's how you really can get hurt badly, you know. Uh, and, and Angelina has no remorse. She's not slowing down, but it shows Gail's toughness that she's up, still trying to bring some offense. Oh, come on. What the Velvet hell? Scott pops up on the apron. Blinds Gail Kim with the hair. Oh. Come on, Stifler. What's going on? When Gail turns around, Velvet drops her with the Botox injection. What's the deal with Stifler? Well, I don't know. He, he counts one, counts two. Wow. Wow. I, mean, I told we, you. We have seen week after week, time after time, how referee Brian Stifler is just enamored, whatever the word is, by the beautiful people. And look, wait a minute. Well, hold on. Senior official yeah, Earl Hebner coming down to ring. What? Get your hands off her, Earl. Good God. This man's a senior official. That's no way to talk to He's his a There you go. He's a senior out of here. citizen. Out of here. He just tagged himself in. He just put. He, he just sent Velvet him. to the showers and tagged. He uh, tagged himself in as the referee. I'm going to take a shot. No, 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 don't move. <laughs> now, this is your opportunity, Gale. First the clothesline, oh. then the drop kick right into the head. Earl having to bench this one. <laughs> Leaping clothesline by Gale Kim. Table set right here for Gale. Neck breaker. Count two. No. My God, Angelina, she's got to feel lost out here. What had a BFFFF of uh, <laughs> Velvet Sky? I don't know how many Fs there are. Maybe one too many. Okay. Look how quickly Gale goes to the top. Hits the flying cross body, but again just before three. Angelina hanging on by a cuticle. <laughs> The corner mount was stopped oh. after two. Straight down powerbomb style. Feet of the ropes for extra leverage. And yes, Stifler, that's how it's done. What is, what is going on here? What, whoa, 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 hold on. Gil went for that drop kick in the corner and ended up making contact. And well, I don't think, I don't Earl, Earl Hebner down. I don't think Gail meant that. Oh, roll up here. We don't have a ref. Well, the ref's on the outside. Stifler. Oh! oh Gail hits it. Eat defeat. Gail comes. Stifler! The least just Stifler could do would be to get in here and count, wouldn't it? Well, he did get benched. But he should get in and. Uh oh, watch out. Watch out, Gail. No, it's dead. It's Gail with the roll up. All right, Stifler's going to get. He's going to. Stifler, Stifler stand there with his teeth in his mouth. What's, wait a minute. Angelina rolls over this thing, and now Stifler comes in and makes the count. What the hell? Wow. Holy cow. Your winner and still knockout champion, Angelina Love. What's the deal with referee Stifler? What is going on here? I think it's pretty obvious what the deal is, Tell isn't me it? so obvious. I don't see it. You don't I mean, see I see it. it, but I don't see it. I don't want to believe it, Mike. I don't want to believe it. That stiff was a dirty ref. I don't want to believe it. I don't know if it's dirty or if it's just 
enamored with the beautiful people. You can't blame him for that. He's smitten by the beautiful people. What's wrong with that? I'm just saying. Got to admit, that was cool. Never expected that kind of reaction. It was awesome. Bro, I mean, we've created history all around the world. You know, the fans are going to do that. You know, it's only expected, you know? Hey, it was great. Listen, you know exactly what I'm about to do to this kid. Absolutely. You're going to be out there? No, I can't. I got to go back to the hotel. I got the twins waiting for me. It's Father's Day. Father's Day. You got to do that. You're the one with kids. Exactly. All right? Do your thing. I'll see you later. I know you can. All right? I'll see you later. Be good. Later, boss. Later. Hey, boy. Holy, real quick word? Real quick word. Just want to congratulate you guys on the Hall of Fame. It's fantastic for you guys. I know you're going out next. Face EC3, EC3. What, what are your thoughts? What's going through your head right now? What are my thoughts on EC3? Over my dead body. Over my dead body. Over my dead body. Over my dead body. Those words came out of your mouth last Thursday night. You made this match, Ethan. You signed your death warrant tonight. You're responsible for putting the thought into my sick, twisted, demented, hardcore, and extreme head of bringing back the Texas death match. And when I think of Texas, and when I think of pro wrestling, I think of Von Erichs. I think the fabulous Freebirds. I think Stan Hansen. And I think of my idol, Terry Funk. You know what else I think? I think that you are in for a match that you never expected to be involved in. Ethan, I don't know if you're religious or not, and I don't know if you pray to God, but if you do, start praying. You can give your heart to the Carter family, because tonight, your ass belongs to Bully Ray. I'm going to crucify you for the sins of your Aunt Dixie. And then I'm going to baptize you in blood. of singles competition on the line here against Bully Ray. So we saw that earlier tonight, which was awesome. 
It's great that Devon's going to get to spend some time with his kids on Father's Day, so he's out of here. Whoa. Whoa, watch that. Watch Wait a minute. That. Don't get hit with Bully's rope. That's not good, Mike. Easy, bro. Easy. Get out of here with that rope. <laughs> That's swinging the rope around. They don't need that. <laughs> Taz, let's go over the rules of this Texas death match. It's not about pins, not about submission. So no pin, no submission. Furthermore, no disqualification, anything goes. But here's the important aspect. You win when your opponent cannot Ooh. answer the 10 count of referee Brian Hebner. It's that simple, which makes it such a physical and violent matchup. Hence the name Texas Deathmatch. So, oh man, this whoa, 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 whoa. tell you. EC3 saying this is Carter country and not Von Era country and not anybody else's country. It's his family's country and here out here in Texas. And I agree with that to a degree. But right now he's in a realm that's not his. That realm belongs to Bully Ray. And the offense is just what you would expect in terms of Bully Ray trying to exploit the no disqualification rules. Watch out. Oh, man. Tossed all the way out to the floor. Well, this is all good. You can do whatever you got to do, basically. Gets a little crazy out here. Newest member of the TNA the crowd reaction as he continues what has been a one-sided assault. They, oh boy, wow. Well, they were chanting for tables. Got a few of them now. Got a few tables. I need room. You need some room. Need some room. room. There we go. He needs a little room. You give the man some room. Okay, don't well, trust me. There you go. You got room, bro. You're good. Oh. All right, well, don't have that much. So room. much for that. Maybe a little bit too much. I like it, Mike, but not that good. Not, not much. What is not Bully up to here? Whoa, whoa, whoa! Pulling back. Oh man, this is not good for EC3. Exposing the concrete. I'm telling you, I, I've seen this movie before. <laughs> I don't like EC's three chances at all right now. I don't care if we're in call the country or not. The tables that the fans have been chanting for for the past hour going back to the well, Hall of Fame announcement now being put into play here by Bully. And this is, you can see, it's, this is uh, preconditioned in the mind of Bully Ray. He knows what he wants to do here. He's got a game plan. And, and it's a Texas death match, so it's all good. That's right. He's got his own count outs and that stuff. Oh, wow. EC3 out of nowhere. Yeah, the recovery of EC3 while Bully was setting up the tables enables Ethan Carter the third to turn the tide. But took a look back at those two tables. He shook his head like he wanted nothing to do with that. And of course, EC3, oh. he's on that tables hit list yes. that we've recently seen well, from Bully Ray. Not just him, but TNA president. Uh-oh. TNA, oh, oh. TNA president Dixie Carter's on that table hit list, too, by Bully Ray. Three, two, One more. One more. Where's he going to put it? Well, he's already moved all the furniture around here in ringside, including the broadcast There's table. He's like a set designer around here. That's, what, that's exactly what he is. Oh, man. I'll tell you, Bully's got a game plan, and EC3 is not part of it. He isn't. He's not part of it, meaning he doesn't know what's going to happen. <laughs> <laughs> that's what I'm saying. Nobody knows. How to stack up the tables better than Bully, but again, that, that just momentary loss of focus and concentration in the time that it takes to set up the tables comes back to haunt Bully. You want cowbells? Yeah, more cowbell. You know, the bull rope. I know the rope. EC3 now, look at that. He's got Bully right where he needs to have him. Yeah. Waffles him in the back. 
Again, legal. No disqualification. Anything goes. Back you to back. Saying, Mike, oh. over your dead body. That's basically what he's saying. Yeah. And again, this is the way that you win or lose this match. You win it when your opponent cannot answer, cannot get up at that 10 count. Five from Brian Hebner and Bully back to his feet. Oh, oh man. Well, I don't wow. know if he's going to answer a 10 count or a 20 count. Maybe a five minute count. That was nasty. He don't know where he, that kid is out. He don't know where he is. Force of the boot from Bully sends the steel chair to the head and face of EC3. Dragged and brought back up to his feet. Oh. Well, that'll wake him up. Take the first layer of the guy's skin off his chest. That'll wake him up, all right. Anybody in the wrestling business? I've been Lay in a heavier, harder chop than Bully? No, I've been chopped by this guy hardest ever, ever. Trust me on that. Chop ever. And one look at the chest of EC3 and how it's been discolored from those chops merely drives home the point that Taz just made. Oh, a little treat, cheese grater action here. Wouldn't be a Father's Day without a cheese grater, would it? Uh. Again, it's Texas Deathmatch. Oh, God, oh, right on his my. chest. Oh, my God, how vicious is this? Oh, God. He chops up his chest with chops, gets it all marinated, and then he takes a <laughs> cheese grater and grinds it. Marinated. You recall recently on Impact Wrestling, Bully used his steel chain to open up EC3 in a first blood tag team oh. match as that low blow stops. Right in front of the referee again, that's all legal Texas death yep. match. It's all good in the hood. That low blow stops that. The he offensive had to, bully who yeah, really but, had it going. But EC3 had to do it, he had to stop that momentum. Confidence level rises for Carter Ooh. as he comes flying off the apron with a drop kick. He's desperate right now. You see, Freeze desperate. He's got to do whatever he has to do to get some flow going, some offense going on Bully Ray. The nephew of our TNA president, Dixie Carter, here on his home turf. In Dallas, family members all watching and looking on. Just imagine the pressure on this kid. He's undefeated. He's here in Dallas. His family's all here. The Carters. You don't want to lose. A dazed Bully Ray trying to get his bearings at this point. I think some of those blood vessels are definitely busted up on the chest. Oh! oh. Of EC3. Face first, man. That, that. Oh, man, that was really looked painful as hell. Another one. The viciousness that you would anticipate in a Texas death match. Exactly what we have seen from these two is a third time. The head of Bully Ray rings off the steel chair. He wants the ref to count now. Feels that's enough to keep him down for 10. We'll see. EC3 breaks the 10 count from the referee to inflict more pain. And now EC3 gonna go high risk. We don't see this very often from Ethan Carter the third. Well, that's why you don't see it very often. Not very good at it. Look how quickly uh -oh. he's able to recover. Head up to the corner. Well, he's got a lot of power, a lot of power locked in here. He's got size advantage. Oh, God! You see the landing on that suplex out of the corner off the top. Could have been worse, though. Could have right. been right in the middle of his spine. I, I think Bully might have missed his mark a little, what he had in mind on that. 
but still put the tail end of that, 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 that chair. steel chair in the lower body and the legs of EC3. Far side of the ring. Bully looking for, well, anything that's not nailed down. You've got to be out of tables at this point. Got to be. What's he looking for? What is we got here. Looks like uh, it's a trash can. A little <laughs> down. A Dallas Cowboy a trash can. Logo. Well, you know, I don't want to brag, but. Go ahead. Now, uh, I'm gonna... some duct tape right there. Wait a minute. Oh, he's got a blade, dude. That's he's a... got that box cutter? Yeah. He's got that. He's cutting it. The... Oh, whoa, whoa. How many times have we seen this from Bully? If, if this is what I anticipate. Yeah, you know, we've seen, you're right. You're right, we have seen this. Gonna pull back the canvas, gonna pull back the boards and the pads and. Oh, oh, man. Well, that's a veteran, keep the man down. Well, Bully Ray, you called him a set designer earlier. Well, he's just dismantling the ring. Hey, man. It's a Texas death match. Bullies in it. We're in Texas. What the hell? Let it go. Yeah, fans want the board. What do you think? Board or table? What's your vote? I think it's the board. Board wins. About 60 40. <laughs> whoa, whoa, whoa. It. Oh, Spud! Ooh. Kendo stick shot from Rockstar Spud, who was the first person to go through the table on the hit list. That, that's not going to do it. The kendo stick by Spud. It's kind of a wake-up call here for Bully. Oh! Oh, oh. Yeah, right between the uprights. Oh, no. Weapons for the Cowboys. Oh, my <laughs> God! <laughs> Playing in big Yahtzee with him. Oh! Needs a beer and some Metallica, and we're good. <laughs> oh, look at this EC3. Nice. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Oh, wow. wow. Look at EC3. What an explosive move. The boards exposed by Bully earlier. His chest is killing him. You see, he's grabbing at his chest. The cheese grater and the chop, but now here comes the count. Yeah, you're right. He dug down deep. He drove Bully head and face first into the into the boards, into the wood. And referee Ryan Hebner refs, is at refs six. Up to six. Again, it's a ten count. Bully's out, man. Well, we're close here at eight. He's got to hurry up. Whatever it takes. Use the ropes. Get back up to your feet. Referee breaks the count. Hey. The hell's in it? I don't know. Oh my! Oh no! Look at the sh this that, looks like that, shards of glass. glass. Yeah. Oh god! How dangerous this is to be involved in this match to begin with. And now to have this to deal sad. with the glass being. Spread in the ring. Uh, this is going to get bad here. EC3's got Bully lined up for something. Oh, oh. He caught him in mid move. Oh, God. That chest on the glass. Caught him with the bubble cutter. And you're right. The already damaged chest and face of EC3 driven into the shards of glass. C3 out on the floor. I believe Ryan Hebner at this point is like at six, I think, maybe six or seven in the count. And he's back up to his feet. And Bully's got the kendo stick uh -oh. that Spud introduced earlier. Whoa, 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 whoa. Oh, wow. God. Dropped him. Whew. Well, uh oh, Mike, this table's here, man. Here we go. 
He set it up, man. This is what he wanted. Whatever he's got in mind, whatever bully's got in mind. EC3 laid out on the table. Look at that shot right there. You can see that shot. Oh, beautiful shot from overhead. Whoa, 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 whoa. whoa. And Dean. TNA President Dixie, Dixie Carter. Carter. She's not going to let this happen to her nephew. Can't say I blame her. She says, don't you dare put in the finger. Bully Ray. And of course, remember, remember what Bully has promised that he's going to do and who else is on that table's hit list. I'm going to kill you, Vince. Whoa. Dixie, Dixie better get out of here because Bully's not playing around. Bully in pursuit bully, bully, of Martinez calm down, President. Bully, calm You're right. Down. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Oh! oh, God. Did you see that collision? EC3 had just gotten off the table. Mike, he had no Mike, idea. Mike, 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 she's, out. she's out, man. She's out. Oh, God, I hope she's okay. I mean, that, that was nasty. She plunked heads, I guess, with Ethan. Oh! Ooh. Uh oh. No, no. Mike, you don't think. Not. Mike, you don't. Not, not in her hometown. Oh, hold on. Forget about hometown. Mike, you don't think. You know. Oh, Mike. Oh, no. Bully, don't do it, man. Don't do it. Don't do it. The prone body of TNA President oh my God, Dixie Mike, Carter. I can't believe this is going to be. Lay out the tables right here, just feet in front of us. From behind, EC3. Oh! The kendo stick. Spud pulls Dixie to safety. And his bully just crashed through the table. And now, Brian Hebner putting in the counties at three. My God, I can't believe this all, the way this all just happened here. Brian Hebner's at, at six. He's at seven. Well, he's got to get up by the 10 counter. He's going to lose this Texas death match. Ray Hebner's at nine. Wow. Wow. Your winner, Ethan Carter III. Well, you can't outplay a Carter in Texas, especially Dixie Carter, I gotta say. She yelled at me, I didn't do it, but she yelled at me for. Wow. I, I can't believe this happened, what happened here? I don't know why I got yelled at, I guess because I'm from New York. But anyway, I. I, I, I Bullets out cold here. Going through those tables. Wow. Crazy turn of events. Who would have thunk it? EC3 the victor in Texas death match against Bully Ray? That's exactly what we have just witnessed here tonight at Slammiversary. What a war that was. How physical. I mean, Bully had everything set. Pardon the pun. The table was set for him. Right. When he, I mean, when he laid Dixie on that table, let's take a look here. At the end of the match, towards the end of the match, what happened here? Everything kind of happened a little fast. Let's take a look. Well, this is in the beginning of the match, so he really came out here, but this is towards the end here. So look at that Yeah, they... Dixie was down and out, and then Bully was about to... Wow, look at how close that was for Bully almost falling through with Dixie on the bottom of him, but Spud coming out here and getting Dixie out of harm's way. 
And to think that EC3 not only wins the Texas Deathmatch, but he beats Bully Ray at his own game, in essence, by putting him through the tables, thanks to Spud's interference. Up next, tonight at Slammiversary, James Storm, Mr. Anderson. Right now, this is big right here, man. Got a winner here is going to advance tonight to face Bobby Roode and then face our world champion. And Gunner has Anderson exactly where he wants him. And uh, with James Storm. Oh, wait a minute. I think Storm went to drill Gunner in the back with the ends of Gary. By mistake, he caught Anderson flush with the kick. Gunner going to take advantage of the situation. And Storm actually helped him win it. Ago, Mr. Anderson, one of three men fighting for a shot at the world champion Eric Young. James Storm accidentally kicks Anderson instead of Gunner, and as a result, the Cowboy cost Anderson his potential world title opportunity. Storm spit the fear in his eyes to blind him. Then the last call super kick. Victory to the Cowboy. You got me here. What the hell you want, man? Have a seat, please. What are you drinking? Anything cold. Anything cold. Got you. Hang on a second. Sit tight. Bam! About a drinking contest. That's a great idea. I'm glad you thought of that. Are you kidding me? You want to have a drinking contest, man? You only got like four to my life. You're not done? I am no. the worst drunk I, ever. I'm not even going to take am. you to family reunion. You know what I am, though? What's that? I'm a pretty good actor. You're an actor? See all this stuff right here? Uh -huh. Real beer! See that? Real beer! <laughs> I'm not drunk! <laughs> Revenge! Bam! <laughs> I'm taking out the trash! Do you not adjust those televisions? Don't go butts with those rabbit ears. What you see before you there is a new sheriff in town. Sorry about Here we have it. June 15th, Dallas, Texas, anniversary. Bring your cowboy boots. Because you're going to dance with the devil. I've done so. You know, Taz, when it comes to James Storm and Mr. Anderson, we're talking about two totally different and distinct approaches. Mr. Anderson sort of taking the comedy route to get into the skin of the cowboy James Storm, but Storm not laughing in the no. least. A very P.O. James Storm here tonight in Dallas. You're right about Anderson, but he does the you know, a comedy routine, but it works. It's effective. He's smart, and that's the thing. With Anderson, he's one step ahead of you where someone like James Storm, he's just a, a vicious, explosive, combustible guy. And you know what? It, it's smart, I think, from a head games perspective, what Anderson has been doing with the Cowboy James Storm. That's, but Anderson's got to be careful of Storm you're coming here right now tonight. And be careful of that serious side of the Cowboy James Storm. The words that we heard on Impact Wrestling from Storm, where you want to be a cowboy, then bring your cowboy boots to dance with the devil. Yeah, you know, Storm's a cowboy, and he's, uh, well, we're in cowboy country, but a little bit different. Storm is not from Texas. Tennessee cowboy. I'd be very proud to tell you he's not from Texas. You know he's not from Texas either, me, if you can't tell by my accent, but I digress. But I'll tell you what, I just want to go back real quick and think about what we witnessed earlier with EC3 and Bully Ray. I still can't believe it, how close, this close, to seeing Dixie Carter get put through that table, man. It was crazy. So, I mean, I, in a way that's good, in a way it's bad, but whatever. Bottom line, EC3 wins the Texas death yep. match. Never be able to take that away from him. No, sir. Mr. Anderson about to come to a head right here, right now in Big D. 
Well, it's been a very physical evening here at Slammiversary. We've seen a lot of intensity, a lot of rage, a lot of testosterone raging. <laughs> and I don't think it's going to stop. Remember, we still got a steel cage match for the World Heavyweight Championship. Eric Young defending against the challenge of Austin Aries and Lashley. And that is, as Taz said, still to come tonight. But first, I believe we're about to hear from James Storm. Cut it off! some fake ass cowboys. I see we got some uh, cowboy players in the crowd right here. You see that right there? I'm not a Dallas Cowboy fan. I'm a Tennessee Titan fan. That's what we do right there. Because I can stand in this ring all night long, and if you're anything like your quarterback, you sure in the hell's not going to hit me. That's pretty good right there. <laughs> Cowboys are too happy with James Storm just did. They look pretty pissed off. I don't blame them. Dallas freaking Cowboys here tonight, ladies and gentlemen. We also got this stupid freaking Cowboy in the ring. And this guy from Green Bay, Wisconsin, Mr. Anderson. You know what, I'm freaking sick and tired of waiting. Well, yes, Anderson, always entertaining. But now, it's time to throw fists here with James Storm. Oof. Well, it's go time, and that's Anderson. Well, that's his deal. Well, what's going on here? That Dallas Cowboys. Yeah, Anderson. support for the Cowboys at ringside. Oh! I'm sure it's some sort of a hydration drink. <laughs> you gotta stay hydrated, you know that. Pro athletes, for God's sakes. But Anderson, he will just bring it right now to the Cowboy, but I'm telling you right now, the Cowboy, he's crazy, man. He's a wild man, and he's dangerous. He don't like anybody at all. I don't even think he likes himself. He has just been hell-bent to take apart Anderson, and we're seeing the beginnings of it here. Look at this. Yeah, totally concentrating, focusing on the leg of Anderson. All started with the chop block, then attacked him right in the ropes. And James Storm has started this match off with a bang and has Anderson totally on the defensive at this point. Yeah, working up, trying to knot up that leg, that part of that hamstring, probably. That's what it looks like. And you see Anderson can hardly even run. He can't run. Assault on the legs continue. Go figure four right here. Sure looks like it. Going to drop down and cap it off. There it is. 
Never expected this game plan, Mike, by, by Storm. That's, that's the pro that this man is. That's why he's a former World Heavyweight Champion. He's smart. He comes in with a game plan different than you would expect. Nobody would expect him to gun after the leg of Anderson and lock in the dreaded figure for, for this early in the match. Well, I, I have to agree with you, but Anderson able to try and stop the momentum of Storm turning the figure four over. Usually you would think it Storm in anticipation of that last call super kick uh, might work on the upper body yeah, I, of I, Anderson. I, exactly. But not no, the case. No, I know, and there's no rhyme or reason why and how he sets up his game plans, meaning Storm. But I like that going into that It's tougher leg. to prepare for. And I'm telling you, we're seeing Anderson look pretty good right here, but I bet you dollars to donuts, that leg's not 100%. You can see the way he's running. Trying to fight back through the pain is Anderson. Series of strikes and then hits the spinning neck breaker. See, see what I'm saying? Yeah. Trust tried me. To, tried to put all of his weight on it. it oh, wasn't, that's what wasn't happens. Right. If I see it from sitting here, trust me, Storm sees it from across the ring from him. He took a little long and celebrates early and pays Anderson. Pin. Here it is. Quick cover and a quick two count. Again, just having a little. Problem putting weight on that leg is Anderson. He's got to be careful. Oh, oh, wow. And, and maybe if you think about it, this attack on the lower body by Storm, maybe it's not to set up the last call super kick, but maybe it's to try and take away a move of Anderson, like, say, the mic check, where he's got to oh, have yeah, yeah. that proper base. Well, that, that, that's a good point. That could be, yeah, you're right. Oh. I, I did not think of that. That's a very good point. I was just thinking of that he would do, wow. do what he's doing to Anderson and try and knot up that leg in some sorts. He's got his mind set on those Dallas Cowboys. Which sure does. That could hurt him, Storm. He's got to stay focused here. Storm all the way up top. But before he can do another thing to Anderson, Anderson fights back. First with the punches. And oh, boom. Anderson got rocked with the kick to the back of the head by Storm. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Watch this. Anderson's got Storm up on his shoulders. Oh, man, look at this, look at this. Wow, oh, wow, wow. That was pretty Punch, cool. Punch, now. Whew. How about the strength I, of I, Anderson I to know. take Storm up on his shoulders there? He's sitting here trying to figure out how he could do that. Because, as we talked about, his leg not being 100%, meaning Anderson. Oh, wow. Impact of the kick sends Anderson all the way through the ropes, and that might be a break for Anderson. Oh, I think, yes, I think you're right, maybe. <laughs> but Storm's going out after him. That might have been a little snidbit, or tidbit, whatever the word is, of a uh, last call super kick right there. He's still jaw jacking with those Dallas Cowboys. I think more than jaw jacking with the one gun salute. Just oh, my man sprayed the beer right in the face oh, whoa, 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 of defensive end George Selvey. He got pissed off. Thank God our security's there and they're big enough. That could have got real ugly out here for right. Storm. Security, teammates. Trying to hold him back after the, the beer was set right in his eyes. This thing just got explosive out here real quick. That's a dangerous situation with the guardrail down. Yeah, those guys are pissed. I don't blame the, the, the Dallas Cowboys there for being that pissed. That, you know, especially they're here as guests. And You're right. Security well, they're, doing they're everything. I mean, I'm looking, they're, I'm they're not looking at the monitor. They're I'm looking at those guys. They're, they're, look, they're steaming over there. Oh, oh, oh. No, been... He's come over the guardrail. That's George Selby and the Cowboys. Okay, well, our security needs to get him back because he's going to get hurt. We will watch in the oh. ring. Mike checked by Anderson. Mike checked by Anderson. Storm never saw it coming. Oh! Oh, man! Your winner, Mr. Anderson! Look at this! A big party right here! The Dallas Cowboys attacking in a nice way. Mr. Anderson, give a big assist. Joe Selfie and the Dallas Cowboys right there. And why not? Get in the ring and celebrate with Mr. Anderson. 
That's a great shot right there. Hey, that's a sports center moment, oh boy. <laughs> that's a sports center, center home, a moment. Yet another. Let me give it to you. Da -na -na, da -na -na. <laughs> another special cool. moment here tonight in what has been a series of them, one after the other and back to back. Uh -huh. You want to talk about special moments? Let's talk yeah. about what's on deck. Steel cage to be erected. World heavyweight title at stake. Eric Young has two challengers. Well, Eric Young, yeah, he's got his hands full for sure. Got to deal with Bobby Lashley. Got to deal with Austin Aries. Both men in a steel cage gunning for the world title. Listen, Eric Young, he didn't sign up for this. But you know Eric Young, he's a fighter. He's a fighting champ. Know him like I know him. He's going to come out here and knuckle up against Aries and Lashley. Nothing's going to stop Eric Young, world heavyweight champion is standing by backstage, I believe. I think JB is with EY. All right, thank you very much, Mike and Taz. What a night it's been and yet to come. Up next, our main event, the World Heavyweight Championship on the line. The champ, Eric Young, stepping into the ring. Not one, but two opponents tonight. It's been a hit. EY, the last month, a lot has happened between you and me. But right now, none of it matters because we're fighting for the TNA World Heavyweight Championship, and I've tasted it once, and I'm gonna taste it again. Tonight, may the greatest man win. That's, that's Austin Aries, that's one of my opponents. He created option C, shocked the world, and won the World Heavyweight title. The other guy, Muscles. Bobby Lashley is one of the toughest and strongest guys in pro wrestling. And quite frankly, it's terrifying to be in a cage with you for a sane person. But Bobby Lashley, you're not looking at a sane person. You're looking at a world-class professional wrestler. You're looking at the world heavyweight champion. You're looking at a crazy person. And this is Dallas, Texas. This has got an arena full of crazy people. Hell, we flew crazy people in from other countries. And tonight, I'm going to get crazy. I'm going to get so crazy, I'm going to keep this belt. How crazy? Just crazy enough. It is our main event up next here at Slammiversary. This is Eric Young's one-on-one -on -one opportunity with the world heavyweight title at stake. He completes the gauntlet match. He was victorious. He shocked everyone. And then he demands an opportunity for the title tonight because he's waited 10 years. No way, no way. Pile driver! He got it! Eric Young has he become the new world heavyweight champion, my god! You gotta be kidding me! I stand here because of you. That won't ever change. I love you guys. This is a lifetime. 17 years I've been thinking about this day. And to be honest, it's, it's even more perfect than I thought. I can't believe it. of paper champion, that's over. I'm going to defend this whenever, however, and any way you guys see fit. Who else would make their first world title defense a monster's ball match? EY does it again. This was for all the people who doubted Eric Young. Another successful title defense. Eric Young, the world heavyweight champion. With each and every victory, the level of respect for the fighting champion, Eric Young, rises. They put challenger after challenger in front of him, and Eric Young just keeps knocking them down. Ladies and gentlemen, in anticipation, of our slam anniversary main event inside the steel cage for the World Heavyweight Championship. Taz, why don't we go back and let's see exactly how we reach this point tonight. The fact that EY now has two challengers for his World Heavyweight title. 
You see, it was Lashley versus Samoa Joe. It's just a, a, a match of the Bohemians. It was physical as hell. But that right there, that spear. Look the spoon. Distracted was Joe with the referee. We didn't want to hit the ref, and boom, he got speared. Victor was lashing, then boom, his brain buster. Wow. By Austin Aries on Kenny King. Austin Aries goes into this, this slot here. With, in essence, you have two number one contenders, for lack of better terms. And this all because director of wrestling operations, MVP, suffered a torn meniscus in his knee in his last match. MVP not medically cleared to compete tonight. And as a result, Austin Aries and Lashley, two challengers for Eric Young. Yeah, and again, I don't I do not envy Eric Young in this situation. When you're a champion, you feel like you've earned the right to know you're competing against so you could train and prepare for that. He did that with MVP, but now he's got to face two guys in the cage, two guys of Ashley, Ashley, Lashley and Aries. Next step on this spectacular Slammiversary event from Dallas, Texas, is our main event. World Heavyweight Championship Showdown three-way match is now. For one fall, and is your Slammiversary main event for the World Heavyweight Championship. Introducing first, challenger number one, making his way to the ring from Tampa, Florida, weighing in at 216 pounds, a double Austin Aries. The victory over Kenny King puts Austin Aries inside the steel cage. He is challenger number one. And now, introducing challenger number two, weighing in at 272 pounds from Denver, Colorado, Lashley! And Taz, if you think about it, it was early in the night when Lashley defeated Samoa Joe. So while Lashley competing for a second time this evening, right. he has had that downtime. He has. He definitely has. Great point. And, but I will say, I think that Aries, I don't know if Aries is 100%. He looks it, but I don't know. His match was extremely physical, and it was later in the night to your point. But the one advantage I have to say that, that the world champion has, who's coming out here in a second, is that he is fresh coming into this. He's going to need to be fresh. And now, introducing their opponents, weighing in at 235 pounds from Nashville, Tennessee. He is the TNA. World Heavyweight Champion, Showtime, Eric Young. As he's fresh, and he's crazy. He's, yeah, he's crazy. He, he, hell, think about it. Hold on, he's, but, the, yeah. he, he's the craziest Canadian this side of Toronto Mayor Rob Ford. <laughs> and that's saying a lot right there. So that guy's a trip. He's the whole vacation. But I digress. <laughs> but anyway, look, you know Eric Young longer than me. You know him a long time. He's crazy, he's crazy like a fox. He knows what he's doing, and he loves this type of stuff. He loves going into the underdog situation, the under, uh, overachiever situation. That's his style. That's what built his career. I respect that out of him. So, but he's still, this is tough sledding right here, buddy. Real tough. There's the World Heavyweight title that was won by Eric Young on April the 10th. He won a battle royal. Yes, he later that night defeated Magnus to win the World Heavyweight Championship. Your World Heavyweight title match can only be determined by pinfall or submission only. And I like that, especially with the high stakes in this matchup. Let's make it pin or submission. No need to have escape the cage rules. At the bottom line, look, the cage is here to keep people out of it. You know, that's basically it. Just the three men and the referee going at it for the World Heavyweight title, and there's no wasted motion. And there goes Lashley, just running right through Aries. And this steel cage match at the request of Eric Young after he won two out of the three matches on Impact Wrestling this past Thursday night. 
Eric unleashes the offense with the right hand. The wow, leap of the by Lashley. He drops the champ at the clothesline. And again, Bobby Lashley here in this steel cage match. Oh, man. He's on his own. No help from Kenny King or MVP. I don't think he needs any help, bro. Yeah, because of the pressure put on MVP by the TNA Board of Directors. Yes, true, true, true. But right now, Lashley's in control of both men. Going to take him up to the shoulder. Yeah, that dominator, that running power slam. But instead, it's Aries who connects on Lashley. Well, they, they, look, I think both men, it's not that they, in essence, they are teaming up on Lashley, but they have something in common. Let's get this big monster out of this thing together or just keep him down or hurt him. Oh, look at that. Wow, wow. Yeah, that's impressive right there. The superior strength of Lashley taking both Aries and Young overhead, but now, oh, Lashley and Aries. Or rather, Lashley sent into the side of the steel you cage gotta, by the team. You gotta be yeah, careful. But then watch Aries. You said be careful and saw how quickly he slid in for the pin attempt. The, 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 the thing is, like what Aries, Ar oh, Aries is about Aries, Mike. That's what, you know, he's, he's Always has been. straight up self-centered. I respect that out of the guy. And he's gonna do what he's gotta do to become the world champion. And if that means being buddies for a second or two with EY during this match, he, he would. And he Why did that. You? Right. That's how he is. He's conniving. He's, uh -oh. wow. he's also about to get press slammed. The press. Oh, oh God. wow. Boy, what a view we had of that. The face of Aries wow. went right into the side of the steel cage, and then on the other Look side this. of the ring. Aries just, Young. Uh, uh, Bobby, I'm sorry, Mike. Bobby Lashley just taking big human beings, throwing them around like them rag dolls. Let's take a look here. Look at this. Into that steel fence. But look at the power here. Oh. And then Lashley just, after that, took uh, EY and just chucked him. Lashley covers the champ and EY powers out. Again, pin or submission. The only way to determine a winner in the cage match. Well, look at this game plan here by Aries. Going after those round kicks, going after the back of the hamstring. Oh, Bobby Lashley, but oh man, again the power. And look at this. Oh, wow, wow, watch EY. I'm sorry, watch EY here, Mike. Here comes Eric Young with a missile drop kick off the top. Nailed Lashley. Champ Mike covers. Get him, Mike, get him. Champ gets two. What I was about to say was about um, Lashley, in my opinion, he, the longer the match goes, I feel the stronger he gets. And that's a conditioning thing. Uh, his match sense, his physicality, the muscle mass on him. Uh, his diet, everything about his life, he's Ooh. built for battle. Lashley is built for battle, and he's proven it. Talked about the resumes of the two challengers throughout this evening. Lashley, former two-time world heavyweight champion. Aries, of course, taking that option C, turning the X Division championship into the world heavyweight title. And now, Aries and Lashley look to become world heavyweight champions once again. Well, see, you saw Aries grabbing at that shoulder. I'm telling you, that little bit right there, we saw it Aries. He's not, I don't think he's 100% out of that match with Kenny King. I'm telling you that. You can definitely see him favoring it as Ooh. he gets turned inside out by the champ's clothesline. Nice back suplex by EY. Leads to the pin, and Champ gets two again. And you know what, Mike? I mean, how bad? They tell our audience how bad. And you know what, Eric Young, as I said very well, how bad, how proud, I should say, is EY being the world champion? I mean, it's he's talked about it on so many occasions, how it's been the most important factor in his wrestling life. All the years that he struggled to get to this point and become world heavyweight champion. And now, that title. Could be in jeopardy for in sure. Dangerous yep. jeopardy here. My God! Oh, look at that! Look at that out of Aries. No stopping this guy. He sees Ey kicks out. He drills Lashley. I love it. Would he go for the brain buster here on Lashley? Can he get him up? Can he get him up? Oh, oh, oh my God! He had that brain buster in mind, but Lashley counters by flinging Aries overhead into the cage. And Lashley can win the title here with the That's pin right. on Aries, of course, and almost did. That's right. Let's take a look at the lower back. The oh, spot. Wow. I mean, how about that? But he almost got the... Oh. How about that DDT out of nowhere by the champ?
when Lashley covered Aries for the pin, if he would have got the one, two, three, Lashley would have been the world champion. Imagine that. Just this close. Eric charges into the corner. Ooh. Lashley connects, but now all three men involved with Aries. That was nasty. Open hand chop to the chest of Eric Young. Ooh. He's doing anything he can, Aries, to just hurt, injured, do something to Eric Young. Oh, EY oh. takes Aries up to the shoulders, then uses the body of Aries almost as a oh, battering oh, 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 ram. Mike, 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 oh, imagine that. Look at the superior strength here of, of Eric Young. Both Lashley and Aries got 500 pounds. Hey, man. Up on his shoulders. Huh. Wow. Mad respect right there for EY. Pin. Cover on Lashley. No. Wow. That was impressive. Let's take a look at that set. I'm not seeing it, but I'm not believing it. You got to do a lot of squatting, a lot of back <laughs> squatting and leg pressing to have that kind of power. And we come back live, and well, we know the object is not to escape. As Eric was climbing up to the corner, who knows what he was having in his mind, what kind of offensive move that, that he would attempt from. Off the whoa, side whoa, whoa. of the this cage. Is dangerous here, Mike. Very dangerous. Dangerous area here. And Lashley. Oh, no. Oh, my wow. God. Look the body of Eric Young just draped over the top of the cage. I don't know what the hell Lashley's doing here. Lashley reigning oh, no. in the right. But Aries. Hang on. Man. This is dangerous here. Remember, it's pinfall or submission. That's it. Not escape the cage. This is dangerous. We have all these men, one EY hanging off the tops of the steel cage. Oh, no. Wow. Jumping wow. in midair, snapping off the Hurricane Rana, Super Hurricane Rana from the top was Aries on Lashley. Wait, oh, Mike, wait Mike. Mike. The champ. Oh, no. The crazy Eric Young. Oh, Eric, be careful. Oh, look how high Eric Young is. All the way at the top of the cage. That was insane. Here's the cover. Here's the pin. Aries oh. makes the save. Wow. Aries going to go brain buster. He's got him. He's got him. And oh. he dropped him right on his head. Aries going to win. Aries going to be the Aries champ. Win it. Here's two. No, not enough. God, that was so close. Aries can't believe it. The move that is gained. Aries, so many wins. What a match. What a match. Oh! Aries speared out of his Lashley, moves by Lashley. Lashley, who Lashley. Covered, and oh, we almost had a new champion again right there. I don't know who's going to win this thing, but whoever it is, it's going to cap off. Oh, a great night. This has been awesome. Uh-oh. Lash is in the zone, baby. And he's got the champion, Eric Young, in his sights. Eric, he's... as he gets to his feet. Oh, able to grab Ooh, that. Oh, oh, and he went oh. for the spear. And Lashley went flying. He went headfirst into the, into the cage door and then landed outside the ring. That spear that, that, that gained how, him this spot. I don't know how his skull is not split open. Lashley really hit that steel hard, exploding through the gate. EY, EY sees an opening. It's a one-on-one -on -one opportunity. One-on-one -on -one opportunity! Hits the top rope elbow on Aries! EY's Champion got hook. leg hook! One, Cut. two, three! No! No, no. God! Oh, my Again, God! Again, just two. The disappointment in the eyes of EY. What a match here! Feel like we've been saying that all night. The energy in this arena has been awesome throughout the night. Well, Eric Young motioning to the crowd that he has a finishing move in mind here for Aries.
Talking about the pile driver was EY. Uh oh. Instead, the reversal. Uh -oh. But then the roll through. And oh. Aries with the drop kick right in the face of the champ. Well, you know, I, Lash is still obviously out. I'm sure he's knocked out cold on the outside there. How hard he hit that steel gate. Again, a one on one opportunity for each of these men here. Aries first to his feet. As they exchange mid ring, the forearm shots. The right hand by the champion, Eric Young. Like a hockey fight out here. And Eric's still on his feet. He's barely on his feet. Ey, he's going to go wrong forearm. Yep, yeah, oh, discus missed. Oh, went for the flying forearm. Did Eric Young in that miss? Boom. That time the discus forearm was right on target, right on the money. And he's got him caught again. Ey caught him, drills him with another one. Great job by Aries. There's the full speed corner oh, drop oh, kick. Oh. You could hear the impact of the blow in the corner. Opportunity presents itself for Aries if he hits the brain buster. EY able to fight it off using the side of the gate oh, and hit the oh. pile driver out of nowhere. Nailed it. Got to turn him over, Eric. Got to turn him over. Shoot Champion. him. Ladies and gentlemen, the winner of the match, and still TMA Heavyweight Champion of the World, Eric Young. Tremendous job by Eric Young. Bobby Lash at the very end was trying to get back in. You can see his eyes. He's out of it. He hit that steel so hard. The big story. EY somehow gets it done. Stage champ. What a spectacular ending to a tremendous slam anniversary pay per view event. Eric Young has done it again. EY remains world heavyweight champion. Taz, as we take another look at the incredible action inside the steel cage. Yo, we saw the dominance of Bobby Lashley throughout this thing here. And it was just up the physicality of his 3 d team. And how about this? For the world champion, as you point out, just damn near about 500 pounds. Austin Aries was his excellent self as usual. Wow. And then EY off the top of the cage for Look a moment. That. It looked like Jimmy Snooker for a second. But that, <laughs> that was a slap. And this right there was a difference maker. That had a knockout last year. And then these two men went out of one on one. EY and Aries. They went either way. Several close calls, but boom! Power Driver City, EY leaves Texas, world champ. And there's the replay of the three count. You're right. Eric Young has done it again. EY overcomes the odds tonight at Slammiversary. Went from one opponent to two. Think of the minimal time that Eric Young had to prepare for these two opponents tonight. But well, Eric was, Young has done it again. Yo, he's showing respect right here, Eric Young to Austin Aries. And what a great night it was. I gotta say, from, from we saw the Von Erics, the young Von Erics in action, Ross and Marshall, and how about Kevin putting a claw on the place he rubbed it. We saw T3D get inducted into the Hall of Fame. I mean, just the Texas death Texas match. Texas death with match. With EC3 and, and Bully Ray. Anderson and Storm, the involvement of the Dallas Cowboys. Oh. The ladder match with the X Division title. That was awesome. What a the ladder night match. it was. It was, it really was. I mean, it's just, just a great night. Great stuff through and through. Yes. And while we saw some incredible matches and incredible highlights throughout this Slammiversary event, what we'll always remember, the world champ Eric Young, just crazy enough, he's still got the title.